But was anyone else shocked that they that Trick or Treat won that? Oh yeah, so I was I was very shocked that Trick or Treat won. I wanted Cornstalkers to win. I freaking love that movie. Nice. But like when it came down to to Trick or Treat and Doll Factory, I was like, oh dude, Doll Factory's got this in the bag. Like, I I my I was calling a Doll Factory Asylum Championship. That's what I thought it was going to yeah. be. That's that's I totally from the beginning I was like, all right, cool. Asylum's gonna gonna take it on this side doll factory on this side i'm like it's gonna be like a 51 like 49 like it, yeah it's a top either way doll factory or asylum those are for sure the final two for trick-or-treat to show up i was just like what I'm are you doing up, here i'm pulling up the bracket i'm gonna dude, mute real okay. quick my stuff you guys go ahead keep going okay dude so I, again no disrespect to any maze like i i we both agree on that right all these mazes are great and i know a lot of these mazes you probably never went through uh but yeah dude, I, think, I think i went through like the the lockdown was it asylum lockdown like the second iteration yeah yes yes uh for round one listen i knew asylum was going to win but blood bayou is my favorite maze of all time and 13 ats murder manor versus the swamp 13 ats easy win my second favorite maze of all time but for trick or treat to get past a bracket that had 13 ats blood bayou and asylum in it and the swamp and the gauntlet is kind of fucking nuts it's (laughs) insane the the only thing that I equate it to is if if not had no control over who won, which I mean they how could they? It's a public Instagram poll, right? Mm-hmm. Like the only thing that I can be like, all right, yeah, I understand it is the Green Witch. And like people love the Green Witch. And like yeah. even like you know, if people when's the Green Witch coming back? Is she here? And it's just like, uh, I don't know, like maybe look around. Yeah, <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Technically, like, she's here. I mean, if, I, I, I can't ch- if she's not. So <laughs> I chalked it up to uh, a bunch of people voting on that who are are under the age of twenty five. Yeah, I to I be can... fair, because like really, the only the most recent mazes on that list are, I mean, really it, it is trick or treat. That's like the most yeah, delirium, that's maybe. That's the most. Yeah, everything the, else is like pre two thousand eleven was yeah like yeah slaughterhouse yeah everything was pre 2011 they put the underground on there dude that shit was like 2002 <laughs> like a great maze but like i don't know man uh, the fact the, the trick or treat one's a little crazy and i really i'm curious to see what knots's intention of that was because like in my head part of me is like oh i want them to like vote i've always wanted them for the 50th to have the fans vote and bring back the maze that they vote on same and I don't think that's going to happen because I don't think they have enough time to do it. But if trick or treat comes back because of that, I'm going to low key be pissed. <laughs> like, dude, I, come on. If trick or treat comes back, the, I'm calling it now. The conspiracy is going to be like, oh, well, Knott's already had they it. They already had the what, shit. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they already had like the, the set design and they just really had to like dust it off. Yeah. I, I, I would be, I would be upset I have to say the least, but I mean, it's again, great maze. I'm sure it'll do well, but I'm just like, I'm, I'm curious if because like I feel like they picked a lot of like the classics or like like well yeah. known movies, you know what I mean. So I'm wondering if they if they, if like that's gonna be like the main like photo op thing at the, like at the front of the park. What like the bracket? Like, like you know, yeah, like you know, instead of like the giant skeletons, like maybe doing like a like a like a trick or treat like homage or like or mm. even something like with all the mazes, you know what I mean? Yeah, I could see them maybe doing like a, a big mix up of some, but like and though the mazes like, like on the list. Like, years yeah and i think that would be cool i mean the mazes on the list are great there's a lot that weren't mentioned that are still in contention for maybe being the best hatchet high Toon territory uh terror vision like c3 or c3 was on there bobos c3. Dude, c3 was sick um but <laughs> uh even quarantine was tight the grudge was awesome like there there were some really cool mazes but yeah i uh i saw that and i hammered blood by you so hard man i should have just paid like fake bots to vote up blood by you because that maze was you're incredible. creating like three different burner accounts <laughs> <laughs> i mean we'll see what happens i don't i genuinely don't know what knots is going to do i've heard some rumors about one thing they might bring back which i'm hoping that they do uh mm-hmm. but in terms of mazes and stuff i, I i'm out of the loop now I'm, um, excited. I'm excited too i think it'll bring a lot of fans back uh 
but again, I'm a firm believer that starts with management and up top to lead your to lead your squad. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I, I can't wait, dude. You, I hope you're around when I decide when they let me cast lead. Like, I hope so too. I, if if I'm not scaring, I want to be on the management side. I think I think yeah. that's something that like I've decided is that like I because I almost I almost. I talked to uh, John Aspirin about it and I was like, Hey, like what, like what do I have to do to like start this transition? And I talked to him about it uh, going into 2021. So I was like, ah, like, yeah, ghost town. Like my first year in ghost town, it was just kind of meh. It was whatever. And mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't know what I want to do. So like going into that, into 2021, I was like, all right, cool. Like I'm going to try the, and do this mailman thing. And like, if it works out cool, if not like, all right, let's start that process to like being, being the management. Right. Yeah. So like, I think, I don't know, I don't know how many years I have left. I definitely think that I want to stick around like through the transitionary years. You should. Like, I was just, about to just, say, just please don't for... leave. Like you need to be a role. You're about to be one of yeah. those people who are thrusted into a role uh, that you, you are. And, and this is just me saying this in terms of like, I know how you scare and I know how you are. But yeah. the things that were preached to me from Gary and then I auxiliarily preached to everyone else, which I mean, a lot of people didn't listen to me and that's fine. I'm not saying you learned from me, you learned on your own, but like, those are concepts and ideologies that I think should be passed on. And yeah, you're in a no, position where you can do that and you're a good fucking monster. So you have that going for you too. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I, try. I don't hand out the compliments just like willy nilly. Like you, you are a good monster and you like to party. Like you will show them the ways of chaos in a way that isn't going to get you fired. And that's important. And yeah. you, need people like that no i agree i i definitely i want to i've like i want to stick around for the transitionary period i don't know how you know what that's going to look like if it's going to be like two years three years five years whatever but like i definitely want to make sure that like i'm leaving ghost town or wherever i'm scaring in a better place than like when i started yeah and that's a good mentality to have man um and it's going to be a team effort between you and the management and and the other vets i mean and like it's it's not obviously it's not I'm not the only monster out there like it's it's definitely a collaborative sure. thing where like you, you know I mean you you but, know but I will that. say I mean however you are going into it with the mentality that you know that we've been talking about here of just you are going to be thrusted in this role you 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 can't yet say the same about all these vets that are going to be in that position they might not take that role in stride they might just be there to yeah. scare and have fun which is fine but you can be one of those people. I would hope everyone steps into that role naturally, but that might not always be the case. And yeah. uh, you'll be a great manager. You know, what's funny is like I was me and Greg Daniels started cast leading the same year. And mm-hmm. uh, right after our year, I think so many monsters, I mean, Dieterman was a cast lead. We, we had had some monsters come through as cast leads here and there throughout the years. Mm-hmm. But I think some people, seeing me do it at, at such a young age. And then when M- maze of the year and stuff, I think a lot of people saw that and they were like, I could do this. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, I could, I could do that. I'm not giving myself credit. I'm just saying, I think a lot of people saw me and Greg do it. And they were like, fuck, we could, they were only like we, one year removed from the event. Like we could do this. You yeah. know, and, and you should, uh, I it's, do it's, a, it's, I do want to apologize. I'm sorry. I was taking care of it. Phone call real quick, but oh, do what you gotta do, Vincent. Man. Thank you for Maybe. holding it down. Or we're just bullshitting, Aaron, having a thank good time. You for holding it down. Oh yeah, dude. Right. Um, what did I miss? <laughs> you guys just oh, we're just talking about hot mazes and and uh. Yeah. So did we? Uh, so ultimate verdict is we didn't agree with Nazis bracket system. I didn't love it. I didn't love it. I, I, but... I didn't like that they included scare zones and mazes because like you can't yeah. compare the two, like. Right. Yeah. I, 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 my conclusion was that most of the people that voted on this are probably under the age of 24 or 25. And a lot of these mazes, aside from Trigger Tree, have been around since 2011. So I'm how are they to know what they were even looked like? Yeah. But like, but you're a fan of the event. So you know, probably just, watch flow throughs and I shit. I just wanted to give you shit. But like, there's so many people who are like, I have no idea what 13 Asperger Manor is, so I'm not going to vote for that. That maze you know? looked uh-huh. fucking beautiful when I watched the Yovi do it. Dog. And you know what's funny? If you watch, first off, yes, the maze was insane. And I think, to my knowledge, that's the only maze that has scared someone to death at knots. Literally. Someone technically died in that maze. Wow. 
Yeah, someone had a heart attack and they brought him back with a defib. Wow. But they died. They <laughs> flatlined. So that's insane. Yeah, that maze literally killed somebody. Uh, insane maze, incredible. If you go through, it's it's funny to me that Trick or Treat won. If you go through, watch Trick or Treats flow through, and watch Thirteen Hats. Trick or Treat is largely an homage to Thirteen Hats. You walk in, they have the stairway there. They have the room with the library with all the books spinning, the grounds glowing. They have the dinner table scene, is this what the outside we call scene. A reboot. It kind of is. Like yeah. it, it's very similar in layout and structure to Thirteen Hats Murder Manor. Yep. But people just don't. That it's maze just, is fucking you just throw nuts. a little extra decorations in there, and boom, it's a whole new thing. Right, you retheme it. It's a green witch. I will that, say though, Trick or Treat was at its peak when it was lights out for its final year. That was. Badass. I agree. That I agree. was good. It was much better. That was a good. Who would have thought the best reboot was just like let's just turn the fucking lights off? Yeah, let's give them a flashlight. Well, see off. what it's worth. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I really wish they would have done that with Paranormal before that Paranormal left. Yeah, uh, me too. That was things that I had that I had flirted with the idea of like, would that be cool, you know, or should I ask? Awesome. But yeah, I thought that would be a really cool idea. You know, originally when Paranormal came into conception, it was it was intended to be a VIP experience where you guys go through with a flashlight, with a small group, Ooh. and uh, encounter the monsters like in that capacity. That's cool. Uh, was it going to be like, like Trap 2.0? Yeah, something to that effect. Uh, but there was going to be more like interactive, like less of touching you, but more of interactive, like. Uh, uh, like, like for example, room. it kind of, yeah. Like when you went into the, like if you went to the left side and you went into the morgue room and they had like uh -huh. the, uh, like the body tray there, like they were going to have someone on that bleeding and squirting blood and you had to like dig in there and find a key, like all that kind of thing. Um, okay. Which would have been cool, but. That's uh, really cool. Yeah. It would have been good. Did you guys ever do trapped? I never got. To I trapped. did all three years of trapped. You did. Okay. Which yeah. version did you like the most? Uh, First year was the best. Yeah, yeah. My first like, year was the I best. The, the, the second year, when it moved, when it moved from the laser tag area to uh, ballroom, where dark Rain is now, ballroom, it I feel like it kind of lost a little bit of of like the I don't know the, yeah, the magic of it. I think too, like the first year because it was so like new and like such a new concept to Scary Farm, it was just like, oh my god, like this is this is insane. Like yeah. I can, I can tell you every single room and like the experience of like what we had to do to get out of there and like it was, it was just insane. I agree with you completely. My in 2012, the year it was introduced, uh, we uh during scare school or whatever, uh they gave out like a uh, scare school monster of the night type of award, and uh -huh. uh, Gary told me, hey. Uh, the, 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 the prize was if you get that prize, you get to go through trapped on the rehearsal night. Ooh, and yeah. Gary was like, Hey, if I win, I'm taking you through. And I was like, I bet. And he won. So he took me through. And, uh, we Beautiful. went through with like our cast lead at the time and, uh, two or three other monsters. And yeah, it was like a whole new thing. I was like, this is so sick. <laughs> and, uh, my buddy who I recruited from high school wrestling, never had been to hot before. I was like, dude, I'm doing this thing. It's cool. He signed up. He was a uh, death in that maze. So after you went nice. through the, after they put you in the body thing, and he like got you up out of there. Uh, that was his role. Uh, he likes to joke that uh, he would take his breaks and go from late side all the way to, uh, to uh, cruise Est, and he would walk uh -huh. through ghost town while he did it, jumping at people. And he likes to joke that he was the first death on the streets before Mike Pegg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it, it was great maze. Now, when it went to Boardwalk Ballroom, I got a couple opportunities to scare. I've scared in a couple mazes illegally throughout my time, and uh, uh, Trapped was by far the the funnest one that they let us go in and fuck around for like fifteen minutes. And it was a, it was a, when Joey was there. Joey and Boots were in the maze, mm -hmm. um, just being gross. But yeah, I mean, you know, I would like for them to bring it's something like that back. You had to drink like the pee out of yes. like the sink. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, gross. That sounds fun. Um, it was yeah, straight. I, it was straight apple cider vinegar. Yeah. It was it 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 was terrible. Not good. I, do I might not have would have rather drink pee than that. That was fucking gnarly. <laughs> um, it's never mind. I won't say that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um. But, yeah, I don't know, man. We'll see what they bring back for the 50th. I hope they bring back something. I hope they don't just do all new stuff. I would like for them to bring back something. At um, least, at, I've always said that 
that they need a maze where Cornstalkers was like right at, and I know it I know it fucks with day ops but like having a maze there drew people into to camp from that side and it yeah. drew people into Fiesta the and it because that maze fed into Fiesta mm-hmm. and like I I so I want a maze there and I want a maze where uh in the middle of uh what's Silver Bullet the where Gun the Lake Sanders Maze is. oh yeah 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 Lake Maze yeah Lake Maze yeah. I know it's all dusty and dirty and stuff, but like, again, it's a draw for, to get people there. And like, if you're going to yeah. bring forsaken back, like, Hey, tie it into, tie it into forsaken. Like you're doing with, you Do know, like dark how ride they fucking, yeah. Like say how these people became the way they are. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Go back to like when it was those times and design a whole fucking beautiful maze around those times and then where you everything can, went on for I literally do like a haunted mansion esque maze. Yeah. You right really there. can like yeah, buy you kind of thing. Yeah. I, uh, I also liked where Virus Z's spot was at Fiesta Village. I thought that was a good maze location. Yeah, right, right, right where the uh, the stage was. Yeah, right where the stage was. They packed so much into such a small space. They did. I um, I, still, I go there now, and I'm like, how did you put a maze right here? Like, yeah, this? yeah. and they fit I it in that it. exact square. It's like they did. It was weird to see, like, and, and it and it flowed through well. And I was like, oh yeah, fuck, did you guys fit an entire maze right here? I'm like, props to you. Please bring it back. Yeah, I mean, I do. I miss the days where it was thirteen mazes. Now budget cuts happen. You know, bumper cars used to have a maze. Yeah, Fiesta I mean, had a maze. You had a lake maze. You had the corn and, stalker. Location. And the cool thing about bumper cars too is you can easily, especially with taking advantage of that Goring Twenty storyline, you can easily make something around that storyline yeah. right there. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. how did and, this? And I would love for that. Where did this elixir Dude, come you, from? You can where, make you know, blind tiger like an actual thing. Like yeah. Universal Studios, I'll, I'll say this, and that was one of the one of my favorite mazes that I ever been through. Universal Studios in Orlando. Uh, I went for the 30th anniversary, which was in 21, and um, the one of the coolest mazes was called um, fuck, what was it called? Um, it was like a mystery kind of maze. It was supposed to be like you're following this detective on all of his. I think it was like untold truths or something like that, or I forget what it was called. But basically, you're walking through this detective's. You're walking through all of his journal entries, and each journal entry is like a different like paranormal or monster or something that he fought. Um, but the cool part about that is they incorporated a lot of stuff from inside the park. So like before I went through the maze, like my friends were walking me around like, yeah, so like you see this area right here, like you're going to be able to go inside this area, but you can only see it outside in the park, but you're going to be able to go inside and see it all. Like you're going to see like, oh, this is his fucking, there's his window up there of the te- detective's window and you'll see more of his office inside of the, so like they took the facades of these buildings that you can see in the day ops of the park and they pretty much brought them full scale into this maze and then they brought you inside of them so you got to like see them and stuff so it was like Hmm. it was really cool and so like speaking on that like knots can easily do the same thing with like the whole blind tiger concept like you've only seen the speakeasy right there um you only see the door so like you can incorporate the door in the maze as it was like kind of like that facade of like you're entering the blind tiger and then expand on that storyline of like them taking the elixir and then how like crazy it drove them do you have a favorite haunt maze, Anthony? Me? Uh, ooh, that's a very good question. I have, my follow ups to be your favorite HHN maze. I have a I have a favorite haunt maze for each haunt. Uh, as far I'm as just as asking. Do. Okay, okay. But, I would like to hear that because then I'm going to be curious about comparisons. Um, that's just my competitive mentality. <laughs> my all time favorite maze thus far has been Origins. Okay. Only in the, in the sense because... At just knots or Universal as a whole? Like, is it one... Are you going park by park or just... That is my favorite maze of all time. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, that answers my question preemptively. Yeah. I was going to ask how the knots maze stacks up to your favorite HHN maze um, and why. Well, I, I like the sense of not. I like Knott's maze structure better now that I know more. In the sense of it's their formula of scaring is way different than Horror Nights. Horror Nights is basically boo hole, uh, light scare. Yeah, you know that's their that's their formula. It works for them. You know, it, you know, to each their own. Knots is a little bit more creative, especially talking to you about letting you know moving your talent around and and letting them explore the spaces and stuff and and really just kind of letting them have the freedom to be that character, which I've always respected for Knots because I feel like it feels a little bit more interactive into the story. And it it really makes for some really good scares. Yeah, I mean, I would go. I mean, hats off to the actors at HHN. I don't know any personally, but doing 
being for me if if my if my if my role was to be Jason number 7 and I had to come out of the same closet every 30 seconds dude that to me that would be a job like that wouldn't be fun I'm glad Knotts gives us the creative freedom um I'm and and I like that, you know. I I I've always said we're not like I told my talent in paranormal. I was like we we are not not acting farm. We are not scary farm. We are supposed to scare. Yeah. Like the acting comes secondary, in my opinion, to how you get the scare. Right. Uh, people are paying to get scared, not to see a Broadway musical. Um, the, the, I don't mean to like interject, but the, the no, best no. way that like I look at it is like in terms of like character stuff because even for streets because like character was something that like i struggled with in 2019 um the character is cool like the way that i look at it is character is cool for like the pass holders and like the repeat people who are gonna mm-hmm. be there like night after so, night like, follow the story yeah but like in in terms of like the that one like the one-off guest it's like dude i'm interacting with you for like 15 seconds you're not gonna care if i'm a mailman and like what my backstory right. is you're gonna care if you get scared or not yeah yeah See me, I yeah. I I love interactiveness. I love backstories because it gives me a broader and better idea of who that character is trying to be and what they're trying to accomplish in said story. Especially when they interact with you about you know tales of what's going on. For example, in Ghost Town, you know with the you know the witch and stuff. There's some people that even work at the park year round that keep that story alive year round, um, which I think is really fucking cool. Um, so I really like that aspect of haunt. Now, if we're talking now, if you want to talk like a scenic maze that I, I, from start to finish, I was just blown away with. And, and this goes deeper to, this goes deeper beyond haunt. This goes to just the genre of horror itself. It has to be universal monsters 2018. That maze not only redefined and kind of, and essentially rebooted the monsters to make them even scarier to modern day, uh, terms. Now, if you go back and watch those movies, to us, or at least anyone that's a horror fan or a monster fan, you watch those because they're just iconic. They're nostalgia. They're, that's what really started the horror genre. Um, but then coming as a fan to Horror Nights that year and seeing, you know, Slash was involved with this. He made all the fucking music for it. The music. Okay, sounded. that was the Slash year. That wasn't the EDM year. No, that was every Universal Monsters maze has been done by Slash. Um, okay, I thought there was a year where there was a dubstep dude that did. Oh, you're thinking, thinking of, of a different maze. You're thinking of Holidays in Hell, which was that might uh, have been. Figure, yeah, figure's the man. I like figure. I thought figure did the uh, the Wolfman. He did. Yeah, no, he did. Um, Universal Monsters remixed and resurrected. Okay. Ah, that's what I'm talking that's about. Yeah, Universal Monsters was. That's what it was just called the first year, and this is where they kind of redefined them as a little bit more scarier. So you kind of had a scene. So like in the beginning, you went into this graveyard, and and Murdy did a lot of research in like these graveyards in like Germany and stuff, uh, or in Paris actually. There's a graveyard where where Jim Morrison is buried at. There's a graveyard that has like spray paint and everything. And in in that era, like a lot of people would say it's disrespect, but in in their culture, that's actually a sign of respect. Actually, like that's them showing their art to their their loved ones on the on the dead and stuff. Near Jim Morrison's grave, there's a ton of tagging. In the facade of that maze, it was a similar concept of tagging and all these stuff and everything. And then you got introduced to uh, the monster, which was you know Frankenstein's monster, um, the Wolfman, and I believe Dracula. And then you walked into Frankenstein's castle, which was already set on fire. So this is a post Frankenstein story. And then you just go through all the monsters. You see, you know. Uh, you see the monster. You see the way they accomplished the Invisible Man was so fucking terrific. I um, did. I saw the effect. That was yeah, pretty cool. That effect was dope. I loved what they did with the Phantom Room. I mean, the Phantom is just a classic. Uh, to see Dracula's room, the Mummy. You know, all this stuff. To see all these monsters come together, and then just to just this love letter to just the monsters alone. Like that maze to me is easily one of the greatest mazes of all time. So. My question to you would be, what do you think? This is just me prodding your mind because you're a fan, and that's who. Right. As a cast lead, I want to appeal to you for, through my talent. Right. Um, even talent generally just want to appeal to that. What do you think is the separator between Horror Nights being, for all intents and purposes right now, kind of the marquee event yeah. in terms of Halloween? Right. Um, when it very much used to be Knots. Knots oh, used yeah. to very much sit atop the throne. Well, Knots is the uh, one that started it all. Right, that's kind of the only claim to fame they have now. Um, but I, I, I remember distinctly in 2013 scaring a group of uh, Japanese girls, and them 
uh, coming up to me later at night when I was up front to take photos saying they flew here from Japan because they had heard about Knott's Scary Farm and they wanted to see it. And like that meant that was like no, you, uh, one you of those would, things of like, this is why I do this. You know, you would be surprised in other countries how much sliding is is and how much they watch not it's in germany it's in japan it's in china like it's That's growing cool. it is growing and, and literally a lot of the people that talk in interviews about because i've seen videos of like haunts in germany they look fucking fun they look like mm -hmm. a a paradise uh, like they look like a haunter's playground this is like where you want to go to scare yeah I, i've seen some dude Fort park and i would just nature. love to visit because these guys look like they're just having the time of their lives out there like no one you know yeah. they all respect the rules and they're all just out there to do the same job as to fucking scare and put on one of the greatest goddamn shows in the world and, and i love that yeah that mentality is great but they what do you all, think the separator is though the separator your opinion as between as, halloween haunt and not so in your opinion as a fan and there's no wrong answers to this it's IPs. What do you think? Huh? IPs. In okay, so you think, properties. you think people seeing a saw maze on a, on a billboard going, I know that movie, I want to experience that maze. That's, that's a, what's that's, drawing them to that. I can back that fact as well. Look at last year's numbers, for example. The Weeknd was the biggest. He's not only the biggest recording al uh, artist of all time right now, the most popular pop star of all time. He's gone multi-platinum, all this shit. He's, he's breaking records crazy selling out stadiums all this shit all time right currently yeah uh, Michael there, Jackson. there's a man that oh, resides Michael in Jackson, new york yeah. right aaron yeah yeah <laughs> but currently the weekend's on top as far yes. as music goes um am i a fan of it not really i'm not a big fan of his music but that's just me um no, i got you though but guaranteed wait times for horror nights were anywhere from two to three hours minimum so what is not in your opinion what is not because i have strong opinions on this too yeah. Right. Like I said, I I love HHN. I enjoy, I very much enjoy uh, Fright Fest. Right. And I go to events every year just to experience them. I know. I remember when you uh, moved out, you actually went to a couple out of state too. That were. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I've been to yeah. since I've been to Fright Fest and uh, since Lads Over Georgia, Dollywood. Yeah. I've been to a couple here, but and at all of them, I go through the mazes, but I just take time to watch people scare and try to like literally take mental notes of like yeah. how they're scaring, what works and what doesn't, and. Cause this is like a fucking sport to me. Um, but like in your opinion, like what is not lacking or what do they need to do to retake that throne? Because they're always going to have IPs. That's not going anywhere. Yeah. That's not going anywhere for sure. Um, so to, to be, to be, to, for knots to overtake the role in society as being like the scariest event, not necessarily the biggest, not necessarily the, the most crowded, but what is in your opinion, what is not need to do to be, back on top of like if you want to be scared like you go to halloween hall one thing they need to do is bring back chainsaws chainsaws okay. i think in, and, and i'm not saying it's the best scare tactic but it works mm -hmm. in the sense of there are a lot of people that just hear a loud noise and just start freaking out and that goes I and mean, you know this just from yelling and and the shit you make with your gloves and and pads and everything just making those noises scare the fuck out of people because they're on edge the entire time they're there. With chainsaws, not only does it bring that that sense of fear, but you can hear it from a very far distance. Knowing that, yeah. fuck, if, a, a, as a fucking terrified fan, if I go over there, there's going to be chainsaws, and I'm fucking terrified of chainsaws. Everyone's just terrified of loud noises, usually. You know, no matter what it is. Um, I would say ch chainsaws would be one thing. Um... I think what it, it, it's really hard for me to kind of because I look I at not. I know I'm putting you on the spot. No, no, no. I'm just like genuinely curious because I it, no, and I, I'm I'm glad you are because I've never had really anyone ask me these questions. Like, and this is this is good to know. But for me, in the sense that if you're looking to go to a traditional Halloween event that you know that you're gonna get scared and have a good time and go through some really entertaining mazes. Knots is your place to go. Knots is very un and and I think Knots wins me a little bit more over Horror Nights in the sense of just having sliders, because another yeah, like I say, sliding is a great tool to have in your arsenal. Is it the only tool you should use? Probably not. But if you can be very creative with it and and it works with your character and works with your style of things, then by all means, 
fucking go out there and have a blast. I've seen you do a lot of things with sliding and everything, and, and it's something that's that's very you know special to you. Therefore, it works great with you. You know, there's just some people that will go out there and just slide and slide and slide. And I'm just like, you know, there's more to scaring than sliding. Right. You know, yeah. and you know that. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I've tried to teach a lot of people off the porch. Yeah, there. You know, you got to run around, interact with people. You know, have some fun yeah. with people, but then get that scare, and then you know. All right, I haven't done a slide in a while. Let me go for a slide. But sliding is so unique at knots, and it's and it's it's the birthplace of sliding when you think about it. I mean, that it really is. That's where it all started. Yeah, yeah. And so I don't I don't think you know that credibility right there. With knots will ever lose. I I think another thing that you got to incorporate big time is uh, and they and they do a pretty good job at this. But then there's some years I'm just like that doesn't make sense why that's the theming but it is you need to have a good structured theme because yeah. the thing which is something you and i have strong alignment with yeah because the thing you look at horror nights with is when they bring something to the table with all these properties they all connect in a way of some sort to kind of reach that overall theme 2019 i'd like to argue that that was the 80s year that was like really a lot of '80s properties were coming, like Ghostbusters. You had fucking Creep Oh, Show. and Horror Nights, yeah. yeah, yeah. You had all those, you know, '80s. So like that was their theme of that year, and they could market off those properties. Knots, and I know why they do it. It's a good, it's a smart business tactic as far as saving money and whatnot. Knots does uh, reuse a lot of things, uh, and they'll reuse mazes for s- years. My only suggestion to Knotts, and, and I know it's easier said than done, but if you're going to use the same mazes, and, and they have a pretty good track record of doing this. If you're going to be using the same mazes a couple of years, then there's going to be, you got to do some major changes along the way. Mm-hmm. You know, that you got to change, and they've done that, like I said, they, they, they did this a lot, but you got to change, you got to change up some rooms. Like, I'm not talking about like one, you got to make me one or two rooms to make it kind of like a u- new, unique experience for me to be like, oh, fuck, like this is cool. I'm really looking forward to seeing this maze again now. With this new added yeah. stuff, um, Horror Nights. Would I th- you go ahead? I was gonna say Horror Nights kind of fails in that sense of budget. Go ahead and do it if you want to eat on camera. You're more than you welcome. Just came to. back with a drink. Just come. Go it. ahead, dude. I know. I know. We've been. I know, I'm not trying to take up your time here. No, you're questions. good. I just have. I, I'm genuinely curious about a lot of. Yeah. I'm enjoying the conversation. That's why I'm still here. I'm just <laughs> like. He's like. We good. Like I said, as an Ed's uh, monster, who my mentality was get better every day, and yeah. also, I mean, Vincent is a monster right now. He can put these scenes into perspective instantly, and and me being a cast lead too is just like, I want to know what makes the clock tick in the terms of minds of the fans. For me, okay, I'll I'll say this. For me, the biggest thing. Now we've compared the two. For me, the biggest thing, uh, for me to enjoy a Han event, to me to be really immersed into a Han event, and to be to really get scared in a Han event, would be the biggest thing for me is um, interactivity. Now I know between talent or between talent and guests. Um, I would say more towards talent in the sense of because you're not like talent with each other, talent with each other, and then talent to guests. Because which if one I, is more important to you though? Talent to guests probably. Okay. Talent with each other too is is also important, but I think talent with guests is because in the sense of when I go through something, I want to be fully immersed into what I'm going through. If you're throwing a scenario like paranormal, for example, I'm going through a fucking abandoned asylum that's claimed to be haunted. You know, I'm going in the right in the middle of the show. I think they did a, an amazing job executing you being in like a ghost adventures uh, episode and then some. You know what I mean? Like. You start off like uh, like a ghost adventures kind, of, and then you fucking really explore what's really going on, and you're like, oh shit! Like I feel immersed into this now. I'm I'm going into the heart of this thing. I'm gonna find out what's going on. Um, so um, uh, just being immersive to me, because I, I feel like to me, I like to talk with people and try to understand a story. Because if I walk out of that haunt going, well, you know, this maze was cool, this maze was cool, but I don't really understand what the story was. Yeah, and I have walked out of mazes where I was like, I don't get this. Like, what is this? I have a variety of questions for you based off that. And, and Vincent, you're, you're, I mean, you're, you're fully, Chime in uh, too. free to answer too, if you'd like. I, uh, do you think, in your opinion, and I think I might know the answer to this based off your <laughs> favorite maze being Origins, do you feel as if recently, and let's call it recently the past four or five years, do you think Knotts has put too heavy of... I got to change my favorite maze real quick. It's still a Knotts maze, but it's Grimoire. I, I absolutely love okay. what they what they accomplished. Even even that. better example, I because I know I know where you're going with this, Aaron. Okay, do you feel like Knots 
in the past five years has put too much emphasis on storyline in terms of trying to translate it to the customer as opposed to here's the product, here's a simplistic idea that you can get instantly without a pre-show, without extensive uh, uh, rooms of, of facades necessarily that is more focused on scares or do you think that that's do you do you feel like they're doing that in a way to compete with the ips that horror nights is offering and or do you like that concept um and I'll, I'll tell you like comparatively when i was going through haunt some of the best mazes in my history are like asylum for example you walk in you know what that maze is about right off top you don't need a story you don't need a backstory you don't need a pre-show what was the old tagline? Walk in, freak out. Walk in, freak out, which was my favorite hook. Besides, everyone has to go sometime. I like those two. But that's my question for you, Anthony, is is do you feel like they're putting too much of I'm not saying it's a good or bad thing, but no, yeah, yeah, are yeah. they putting too much of an emphasis on story in all their mazes? And I, do you feel like that's sacrificing anything in terms of customer experience? They are, because this is actually a perfect example, and Grimoire and Bloodline are two perfect examples of last year what went down. Bloodline now, and this is why this is why I love going multiple times a year because I love seeing the changes. You know, I love to see what gets cut. You know what? Yeah, you know, ironically, and I and I was fucking, I went. I think I I think we went about five or six times last year. Went through Grimoire every single you paid time. Vincent's paycheck. Yeah, uh, yeah, for real. <laughs> Thanks, Knots. No pass. I, yeah. yeah, for real. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, you know. The two thing, uh, there's one thing I, I, I have to say I'm starting not to like, and that's because it is a time waster, and that is pre shows. There should never be any pre shows in any mazes because it just ruins the flow of things. You're waiting in line longer as a customer. You're already fucking tired of standing on your feet. Now you're standing in line for like two hours just to go through a five minute experience. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. To me, you know, if it's opening night and it's that long and there's no pre show and it's just you're flowing, but it's two hours, like. I'm going to wait through it because it's just like, fuck yeah. Pre shows so kill things. Do you mind real quick? So, I, I share your sentiment and I, I, this might be a controversial opinion. I like the skeleton key rooms. I thought those were cool. No, those are cool because, because you had to pay a separate fee for those. And right. Like, there was an upcharge. It was, so like, I think if you're going to, if you're going to do that, like, apply that to, like the pre-show where like you you have the ability to walk in and just understand and like under like cool this is what's happening but if you do like the skeleton key like how it was you get a little extra story where like you're paying because you want that extra story or like um even black magic when black magic was there there was a scene in the maze where you had a magician doing card tricks yeah or whatever and that was completely random it was all right guys you got you you group come over here watch this as people are walking by you and like to me as a guest like that was so much cooler because that's it's like cool. wow like this was just like happened by chance and th- like that's kind of like a little bit of like what effect i want to have like when i hand out like the letters and stuff where it's just like what did i do to deserve this well you were just at the right spot at the right time Th- this I, I i i agree with that again this is coming I, not that i mean we can all agree here the knots mazes and concepts are incredible they're awesome yeah uh, but if you look historically back at what people will probably say, c- contrary to what the bracket will tell you, what people will probably say are the best mazes are things that are, for example, Delirium. If you're a guest who doesn't know shit about Haunt, you go to walk through Delirium, what the fuck do you think it's going to be? If you go to Haunt to walk through, uh, <clears throat> for example, Alice like... Uh, Wonderland. Huh? <laughs> I said Malice in Wonderland. Right, or... or uh, uh, I'm just you trying say- to think of a perfect example here, um, like uh, the depths, mm-hmm. right? As a guest, you're gonna you're gonna walk through that, and maybe be slightly overwhelmed trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. Back in the old days, we had Asylum, we had Thirteen Acts Murder Manor, right? We had Slaughterhouse. You knew what was going down when you got in line, mm-hmm. and it made the monsters, I think, a little bit more creative because they just worked with their rooms instead of having to worry about pushing the story forward. And this kind of echoes my sentiment about characters, especially on streets. That customer interacts with you for 15 seconds. If you have a diatribe of a bat story, it's probably not going to translate well on streets because these characters, these people 
for lack of a better word, and this is me as a marketing uh, uh, master degree, is you have to assume the customers have a short attention span. Oh, they don't know much. They're yeah. gonna. I mean, right. I talked to so many people about Grimoire because people were like, why was that your favorite maze? I'm like, I don't think you guys understood the story as much as I did. But then again, I did go through it yes. like six times. So right. like after going through it so many times, I'm like, I finally understand. That. Like the second time I went through, I was like, I finally get the story a little bit more. And and for those who don't know, Grimoire is basically the story of the witch's book, where it's gone throughout history, throughout all the years, and where we last, where we're leaving off with it in, in that modern time, which was the 80s. Um, so you're seeing where it's gone. It's It's been... Uh, affiliated with wars it's been affiliated with famine it's been affiliated with you know uh just twisting shit and making it you know you're seeing this progression as you go through the maze throughout history and then it takes you right back to where we began you know so for me i like i after walking through it a couple times kind of reading stuff on the wall a little bit that's where that's where i think is a fuck up too you can't write shit long on a wall because people are not sure. going to have a time enough time to read it you know you're flowing through a maze mm -hmm. you're not going to have enough time to just stop there and go so blah, 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 blah. you know what i mean it's like you can't you just can't stop mid maze and read it um so that is another issue too for me i i, I like i i, I do want it to go back to the old school way where i can just go up, show up to a maze be like okay this is called the asylum i'm going to assume it's based off a mental asylum or something like that mm -hmm. that closed down years ago now things are going in chaos Go into this asylum and boom, all this shit's going off, you know. And like, it's 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 easy to understand right there. I think theatrics in the beginning and a little bit of explanation and like on walls and stuff like that just should not be cut. If you're gonna do a story for a maze, you need to have something that's gonna hook someone immediately just from looking at a facade. That's exactly what I was gonna say. I think the facade should be a very a focal point in the creation of these mazes. Yeah. So do you guys remember to, and this was something that I've noticed that they haven't really done a whole, whole lot in recent years is that they would have like audio stories playing in the queue line as you were walking through the maze. So like doll factory, it told you the story of doll factory, Pinocchio on Starring. It had Pinocchio yeah. narrating to you, like what his life was like going through. So like that kind of helped you get into the mindset of, okay, cool. This is what's happening. Another thing I do, I, I guess I do HHM, remember that. There's like a lot of construction going on right now, too. <laughs> and, <laughs> they're getting ready, dude. Yeah, they're ready. Uh, I do remember that. I also like how uh, Six Flags, I remember uh, Imagine Mountain going through uh, uh, Aftermath. They utilized the uh, Q-Line televisions to translate a story mm -hmm. while you were waiting in line. You so does, watch the so does Waxworks. Mm-hmm. Do they? Yeah, if you stand in line, well, they got right. they got TVs that that show the backstory of how the fucking okay. how the museum got so, to where it's at today. And that's that's good utilization of that. Yeah. Now, my follow up question: If you want it to be, if if your if you had A or B to pick, whether an an A is more basic stories, more focal more focal points on the set and stairs, or B more elaborate stories as they are now and maybe pretty good scares, decent uh, uh, sets. If those are your A and B choices, knowing that, do you, are you a fan of the whole unveiling event that they do? Just personally, I, I don't, I'm not a fan of the unveil. Like the, I, the, talking the about behind the thing like that they used to do? Like how they unveil the whole event, like oh month before yeah, the yeah, they started. they haven't done that since before COVID. Twenty nineteen, I think, was the last year they did it. I'm sure they're gonna bring it back. Hopefully, I, um, I'm so okay, and so that's a good thing. Like to me, like I'm not a fan of that. Now I understand its purpose. I'm not saying that they're wrong for doing it. It's great to get fans stoked, and I I I think that's the idea. Here's my quarrel with it. My quarrel is, uh, I think that. In some ways, A, you you build up the hype a little more sometimes than it turns out to be. Uh -huh. And I think that can instantly bring some people down when they walk through something that looks so sick on paper. Um, I will awesome say photo shoots. that the marketing that they've been doing for the last two years, though, mm -hmm. with videos around the park, mm -hmm. all that, especially last year's marketing. Last year's marketing to me hyped me the fuck up for the event you like that okay i like oh, that's i like viral marketing because and, and that's why horror nights is so good at what they do with as far as, far as the marketing standpoint goes um horror nights will announce things they spread it out you know it's like okay we right they don't do an event though 
No, they don't right? do a full-on event. They, they spread out their announcements. They go, boom, here's this maze. Okay, in two months, oh, there's another maze right there. It makes you wanting more to, until we get the entire event. It's like, oh, fuck. Now the entire event's here. What are we looking forward to? What are we not looking forward to? You know what I mean? Not mm -hmm. when they announce stuff, especially because a lot of the stuff is re bringing back stuff. You know, you yeah. have the one video of, like, here's all the returning mazes. Here's all the returning right. scare zones. And then Third you have, June. yeah, and then, and then this year, last year was cool because they did a whole thing for Bloodline. They did a whole thing for um, Grimoire. Um, by the way, shout out to Rissy. She's in the Bloodline one. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, she's in the Bloodline promo. That was cool to see. I actually, oh, Vi. funny. Uh, you are too, huh? You are too? No, Vi. Oh, Vi. Oh, yeah, Vi is in that. I remember yeah. you told me. I, I remember because I, I was at Dieterman's house. That was when Rissy was, they were still roommates together. And I was at Dieterman, we were chilling, and she was getting ready to go. I'm like, oh, where are you going? And she's like, oh, I'm going to go do something for Knott's. And I was like, all right, cool. Didn't think much of it. Fucking the bloodline thing comes out. I'm like, that's what she was talking about. <laughs> I was like, okay. I, I just thought she was going to go in and, like, maybe they brought her in for something else or I don't know. I should have put here, two and two together. Here is here's me coming from an old head standpoint, okay? And uh, coming from I was going to Knott's in the days where Knott's was the king. Like, yeah. it, it was supreme, and there was no competition. Like, Knott's was the one in the country. Maybe even in the world at that point, to be honest with you. Probably. Like, Knott's was the one. Yeah. And in those days, we didn't have any of this unveiling stuff. Granted, we didn't have social media, but I did not know. Half of the hype is coming as a guest was showing up, grabbing the park map, and seeing what's new and what was not. And reading Asylum, like, that sounds sick as fuck. Let's go. And then you go and you see... For the first time, there's no concept art that goes out. You see it for the first time, this grandiose entrance, and you're like, holy shit, this is insane. And you go back to school the next day, and you talk to them, hey, yeah, October 15th, I'm going to haunt. Dude, you got to go through this asylum maze. Like, it's fucking – and they play it up to their friends in a mouth. realistic way that gets them pumped up. Right. Right. Word of mouth is the best marketing tactic. It is. So I, I – and that's why I'm not a huge fan of the unveiling. I get why they do it, but – I don't mind the videos. It would be cool if they dropped the videos periodically leading up to the event yeah. without any sort of like uh to be title. continued. You know, it's like Yeah. Like I would like for them to drop the bloodline video without the word bloodline in it. Just have people be like, What is this gonna be? And then when yeah. they show up to the event and they go through that, they're like, That's from the video. Yeah. But I think they need to err on the side of mystery going forward to be like, Hey, show up, freak out, there's gonna be some new shit. Maybe drop, you know, a video or two, but like these promo shoots and stuff kind of overdo what it ends up being. And then like I, I, I can tell you more than one example of like, oh, this was going to be sick. And then they etched it. And then when the real thing comes out, you're like, that's all it ended up being. Yeah. You know, um, I think to go forward, I think not seems to err on the side of mystery and let people come every year to see what the fuck is new. Well, uh. Because you're gonna have people like you covering it already. Like yeah. you're gonna go viral with Yeah, they're app. they're they're getting the advertisement from people like me, you know what I mean? Like they're getting right. that free publicity of of people talking about the event, people getting mm -hmm. people excited about the event. Uh and we're we're probably one of the top people out there that constantly fucking praise that yeah. event. Um and I, I, I think what worked for Knots the best, and, and you guys probably I know you guys remember this, um the T V commercials. The uh the the farmer oh, yeah. getting all the monsters fucking ready across the street, bringing yeah. them over to do shit like that again and don't announce nothing. That right there right. tells me, okay, there's gonna be some type of creatures or stuff like that at the park. I mm -hmm. want to go see that. And then what else yes. they have to offer? That right there was to me knots is peak marketing right there. I yes. know this is controversial, but some of my favorite knots commercials were with the Overlord. And I know that, I mean, that, that that was an, that was another thing that like I, didn't quite translate well, but like it got you hype. Because because sure. for me is like the the one thing I love is from Horror Nights, for example, they're <laughs> they're good about doing this. Once they announce everything, they do they usually do this like big commercial that kind of ties all the properties in together. Um, and I love that so much. Uh, last year's was so good because you know when they would do uh, announcements for each maze, they had uh kind of like a scripted thing of like your typical horror fans you know what i mean like you had the skeptic you had you know that you know you had all these different horror fans um mm -hmm. and they all kind of were all a group of friends but each one of them encountered a property that was coming to horror night so like the the skeptic 
you know, she's like, oh, this is fake. Like, he's like, he would never be able to do that. All of a sudden, the power goes out. Michael Myers is standing down the hallway. And she fucking goes, and then that was, that's all that was, was like Halloween's coming to the event. I'm like, that is fucking good marketing, in my opinion. That right there yeah. is, it gives me enough to tell me what the property is and mm -hmm. what it's going to be based off. And boom, right there. That is great marketing. Keep doing that. You guys are doing something yep. good over there. Not so to utilize something in that sense. I, I I love those old commercials. You had the farm. The farmer one is my most memorable one. I can always remember because yeah, I remember just yeah. seeing it on TV constantly. Like fucking every commercial mm -hmm. break was like not scary farm, and I was like, God damn, I'm getting tired of this commercial. Did, but now I miss did it. Did Knott's have commercial? Because uh, I don't get the Knott's commercials. I'm in a different market. Did they have commercials this year? And your um, guys, I mean, you live in SoCal, so. I'm sure I'm they be, had radio uh, spots, but well, I don't know if they had radio. I, I'm, so I'm gonna be 100 percent honest with you. I don't really watch television as much as I used to, like cable television. So I can't really tell you if there was commercials or not. The only thing I go based my news off of is the social media and everything. So everything that I saw based around knots last year was based around social media videos on YouTube or Instagram or something. Like I don't know if they're still doing it. I know they have radio spots. I hear, yeah. I do hear radio spots. I know Horror Nights has commercials because I've fucking seen them. Um, I haven't seen a Knott's commercial in a while, and I don't know if it's just because they don't have the budget to fork out the money to air the commercial. Yeah. I mean, that's, which is that's kind of my a bummer. bummer. They need to up their – I mean, in a dream job of mine, I would love to move back to California and, and be a marketing director for Knott's. I would love to do that. Um, there's a lot of ideas I have, especially around Halloween haunts. That's another thing. They need to bring back Knott's – it's called Knott's Scary Farms Halloween Haunt. That's Halloween what the haunt. event is called. You would, they, and, I, and I would love for nostalgia for the fiftieth to just they need to bring that Halloween back. haunt sign in the front. They I need mean, to like, bring that back, and they need yes. to bring back a sick tagline because HSN just straight up jacked the fog one. See you in the. <laughs> <laughs> I was <laughs> like, you know how many Knots fans were living, and I'm just on social media, just like this is fucking too funny. Like, yeah, it's so, hilarious. Yeah. Apparently, like the story behind that is that that's something that like the monsters will say to one another. Like, okay, like, well, like, but it, it originated it, it, from oh, knots. Totally, totally ripped it off from knots, but like, that's the that's the excuse. But not so to me, and I'm sure this isn't the case, but this is me being a facetious, like, like coach of a winning team. T to me, that's like a in some ways, a, a, an HHN, I'm sure it's not, but in my in my fucked up mind, that's like an HHN middle finger to knots going, We're we're the kings, which yeah. right now they are. And yeah. they can they have that crown. Um, Knotts needs to make a sick tagline. Bring back Not Scary Farms annual Halloween haunt, the fiftieth Not Scary Farm annual Halloween haunt. And they need to have a sick tagline. It needs to be a basic design, minimalistic, and they need to throw that shit everywhere. They need to have an awesome uh, like the HHN. I don't know who records the HHN radio spots and shit, but it sounds sick. Oh, come I to Halloween Horror Nights. Nights. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like the guy with the deep voice and shit. Yeah. Universal right. Studios Halloween, Halloween Horror, Horror Nights. Nights. Select night, it September through October. It sounds great. On it. <laughs> yeah. It sounds phenomenal. Knots needs to do something like that. Fucking copy the formula if need be. Shit, they're right. already copying their formula. Why not copy it back? Right. You, We have the talent to, I mean, we, and again, this is just my opinion. Bar for bar, or pound for pound, in the country, if you're taking events as a whole, I think Knotts has the best talent. Yeah, I'll stand by that. Especially historically, we have the best talent. Yeah, and anyone who's anyone has wanted to slide on Ghost Town or scare on Ghost Town. Right. Yeah. There's not like one haunt guy right? that there's not one haunt person that I've met that said, "Yeah, I would love to scare on Ghost Town one day." I, I've done right. so many interviews in the past where, like, where would you love to scare for a night? Ghost Town is the majority Ghost answer. Town. Yep. Dude, and that's why I tell, like, if there's ever rookies that ask me questions or anyone that's ever like, oh, why should I go to Ghost Town? You know, I tell them the same thing that I've told myself every night in Ghost Town. Hey, listen, this event, this the Halloween as a entertainment event, meaning like haunted houses and things like that, starts with Ghost Town. Like, it starts with Ghost Town. All these theme park haunts, it starts here. And for these people that walked these hollow grounds, whether it was back in 73 when they were doing the uh, monkey makeup from Planet of the Apes or whatever, these people walked these streets and made this what it was for the world to take notice and start doing this. Yeah. For you to put your feet on this same fog alley that these all these people walked and make your mark on the event, dude, that is it. Like, that's it. You know? It's, it's, um, that's like, that's, that's like... 
That's like you moving from fucking a shitty ass basketball team to the Los Angeles Lakers. Yeah, you're on, dude. You you're are on a part the team, of greatness. You know? Yeah. Um, and I think if Knotts does this, I I, I mean they're not going to like list us, but like if if I ever got to the position where I could run Knotts's marketing department, you're right. I would drop that one intense video. I would leave it very open ended. I would make an incredible tagline for the event. I would bring back the Halloween haunt like uh, branding. And I would not announce the mazes. My announcement would be show up, freak out. You're going to see what's here when it's here, you know? Yeah. And I think that the people that that draw in with, you know, they, they need to make an emphasis on like this isn't this isn't the teenager hangout Halloween haunt that it was. Yeah. Because it wasn't like that when I was a fan. It was, yeah, no, you had a lot of actual fans going, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it was Halloween like, dude, fans. this place is intense. Yeah. Furthermore, they're not going to do this, but they need to lift, man, Vincent. They need to lift, lift some of the PC stuff up off you guys and let you have a little fun yeah. with what you say and how you do it. Um, Because, like... So the, the way that I look at Haunt is, I mean, on the on the the ticket, it says not recommended for ages of 13 up. Like mm-hmm. if you're going to Haunt, like you're it's you're going to see some some raunchy stuff. You're going to hear yeah. some raunchy stuff like it's an it's an adult environment. So, like, yeah. you know what you're walking into or you should know what you're walking into. But the way that things are now, is just like. I do, yeah, I do like some of the parents though that will bring their kids and have a bonding experience with it, especially like the little ones oh, that yeah. are, like that can I handle it. I started going when I was, t- I would start going when yeah. I was six. So but I like, get it. I see babies, bro. Like I see toddlers. Like, and I talked to one of the guys last year. He was like, "I was like, that's cool that you bring your son to this." He's like, "How old is he?" He's like, "Oh yeah, he's only two. He goes, he got up this morning. He's like, I want to go see the teddy bear. So we came to Carnival, and now he's looking at the teddy bear. And so like he, they're having a bonding experience over that. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's, they're not, they don't have to go through mazes. They could just sit in the scare zones all night and bond. Be between sure. these characters you know i think i do wish go ahead i was gonna Sorry. say i think that knots has always been that spot of you're gonna make more memories and have more memorable experience going to this haunt than any other i can guarantee yeah, i that. agree mm-hmm. i agree and that comes down to the monsters yeah you're you know, gonna uh, see something regardless what night you go there's gonna be something that's gonna pop off or something that and i mean pop off in a good way a sense of like the, the, the there's gonna be a night where the energy is gonna be really good you know what i mean yeah and so that, then that goes back to why I stare the way I stare. I try to do something yeah. different every night for that one guest experience. Right. But I, if I were not too, to Vincent's point, I would change that back in the ticket to say 18 and over. I mean, you don't have to enforce yeah. it, but like just to say it carries a certain weight to it. Yeah. Um, Cause then parents yeah, start they, looking at that and like, eh, I don't know if I want you going. Right. Yeah. Right. They need to introduce some more blood and gore. And again, I would like for them to let you guys ease up a little bit on what you say, like let you let some stuff fly a little bit in terms of just vocalization. Yeah. Um, But the, and and Horror Nights does it, dude. You take the tram ride down or from the, the escalators down, and you have that voice saying curse words and shit. Yeah. Whoever the over, you know what I'm talking about? Like the yeah, over, the the voiceover Reese. man. Yeah, that's yeah, guy. yeah. Like don't run like a dumbass or yeah. whatever. That's also good. blasted I, fucking heavy metal the whole way down. So the entire, I'm not even too. listening. I'm not even listening to the guy. I'm just like yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's that's yeah. That that would be yeah. That would be sick too. They need more of a soundtrack. There's just little tiny things, but overall, I I, I think to to finish it up, kind of in a way, Knotts is strong in the sense of how they let their monsters portray their characters, like the freedom, the creativity, freedom that they give their their uh, monsters to to create said character. I love that aspect, and they have more freedom to kind of interact with guests and whatnot rather than kind of staying scripted and quiet at Horror Nights. Um, and, uh, sliding and, and just, uh, how fucking magnificent their maze detail is, um, mm-hmm. as far as scenic wise and everything. Cause that's another big thing to me is like, I don't want to look at fucking 50 black walls. I want to, yes. I want to, even in the transition scenes, it doesn't even have to be a scare. Just have like an image or fucking have something that's going to transition me. Like if yeah. I'm going outside from a, like example origins, if I'm going outside from a church, I'm going to go right outside to a porch. And I'm going to look mm-hmm. at Ghost Town. I'm like, that is perfect. Transitions is a big thing, you know, and, and all that. And, you know, and with Horror Nights, the only reason they're as big as they are is because they have the IPs and they have the money to get the IPs. You're more than yeah. likely as a, as a horror fan or as just a, a, you know, a fan of pop culture in general, you're going to choose Horror Nights over Knots because Horror Nights has The weekend. They have Michael Myers. They have all these properties 
while Notch just has all these original mages that no one really knows. It's going to be for the diehard. To content. oversimplify it, I always tell people that Horror Nights is for like the casual Halloween fan yeah. and not for like the diehard Halloween yeah. fan. Yeah. I tell people if they want to get scared, go to Halloween Haunt. Yeah. yeah. That's just me. I, I'm not saying Horror Nights isn't scary. I will say the but... only maze to ever scare me so fucking much that I legit brought a fucking rosary with me because I was so fucking scared was The Exorcist. And that's because oh, I've just been nice I've just been terrified of that fucking movie since I was a kid. So like seeing it in person, I was like, "Get away from me, Reagan! I will I, slap I you." Hope, I hope that in my my mind, if in the future they implement some of these changes that we're discussing now, I think that will bring better guest reaction, and I think better guest reaction is going to make the talent at Knots better because now the kind of the mentality of the talent is we are second place. To Halloween Horror Nights, when back when I started, that was not first. the case. It was we had we are number one, and we have to keep this crown. And we had so the we trophy, and this. we didn't lose the trophy. You know, it was all right, right. And I think if if you have enough people saying, "Dude, not scary for him," was kind of the shit this year. That's going to amp up you guys' talent. Vince, I'm talking to you specifically, and all these new people coming in. Yeah, and that is what they if if they have the chip on their shoulder and motivation and passion. Even if they're new rookies, they're going to want to uh, exceed and meet and exceed expectations of what that event entails. And I think overall that's what what will help Knott's improve. Yeah, I think I think we wouldn't and, – and to anyone that's watching out there, whether you're a Knott's executive, Cedar Fair executive, or just anyone, hire we're not – We're not <laughs> – Hire Aaron. Hire, hire Aaron for sure for marketing. Hire that's me. That's the first thing. Secondly, we're not saying this stuff to talk shit. We're saying no. this stuff because we've noticed things that are happening in the haunt world, and we hate seeing this haunt becoming second place when it used to be first. We talk about this stuff because we care. Yeah, absolutely. About the future I mean, of we, this haunt. We wouldn't be podcast four hours or whatever if we just didn't give a shit. Like, oh, Aaron, another three hour podcast, and you're just a record setter, <laughs> aren't you, buddy? I love talking to fans, dude. Like, and, and fellow monsters. Like, I just. I love hearing what your guys' opinions yeah, are. Yeah, I, I don't I, get to do that. I internalize this stuff. Like, I, I remember this shit. Like, this is things, if I'm ever in a management or a scaring role again, these are things I think about when I'm trying to scare or trying I to I just think overall, things. too, I, I think the, the number one issue in today's world, though, uh, are just crowds. I mean, you know, you have a lot of people who come to respect what it is and enjoy it and have a good time, but then you have the, the other crowd – and it's not everyone, but I've seen a lot since I've been going to haunt. And you guys, I know for a fact you've guys been through it. You've seen it. It's happened to you. There's that rough crowd that comes in and just wants to fucking be dicks. And they just want to try to get yep. a laugh out of their friends and shit. When in reality, your guys' safety's on the line. The guest's safety's on the line. You know, it's like there's no point in any of that where someone comes out a winner. There's just not. Right. You know, it's like you you just and got it's your unavoidable, night. unavoidable. Yeah. To be you, honest. It it's is. Unavoidable. It is. It really is. And your your guys is you know your guys's night just kind of gets stopped for a little bit because you have to deal with that and security and all that shit before you can move on. The guests' night obviously you just ruined your own night because now you're getting kicked out of the park, bro. So right. I mean you paid all that money just to get kicked out of the park. That's cool. It's unavoidable, and I don't know if I don't know if crowd capping is gonna necessarily solve it. I'm not sure. I'm not a numbers guy in that sense. It's not capping. Know. It's just I liked your idea of putting on the ticket recommended 18 or over. Yeah, I would definitely do that's that. That's a bold just, statement alone. And th that's that's a, a completely like – that's that's just a facade. You know, you don't have to enforce that. But just by saying it – It's it's a good way to cover your ass if you're not too. In case sure. it does – you know, someone does – some some a monster says something that – you know, to the wrong person that takes it the wrong way or whatever. And, and, you know, it becomes a legal thing. And then it's like, well, you know, we said, we did say like, this is for adults. You're the one that, that brought their, uh, you know, it's like, it's like when, uh, when Chucky said that, that, that one girl was like dressed like a whore. And then they, oh, that was, that was, no, that was purge at Halloween Horror Nights. That was the, oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. was the announcer, and it made the fucking it made the news and everything and shit. And... Dude, I remember in 2012, I was like 10 feet away from Elliot when he told that girl to go back to Jenny Craig. Dude, <laughs> that was like I went through insane. in 2012. I went through Alice Cooper's maze at Halloween Horror Nights, and one of the fucking I got scared. Mind you, I'm fucking you know I'm I'm a little bit younger, and 
fucking one of the girls comes out and scares me. It was in like the fucking because uh, it was supposed to be based off the Seven Deadly Sins, and we were in the lust part. So like it was supposed to be, it's supposed to look like a strip club and stuff like that. So one of the girls is dancing and everything, and there's a guy. He's sitting there, but he's supposed to be like dead, and he jumped out at me and scared me. And th- I'll never forget this because it was one of the funny. I-, I look at it now; it's funny. At the time, I was like, "Oh, that's fucked up." But now I look at it; it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> I got scared. The the girl looked at me and went, "You're a fucking bitch." And I was like, <laughs> "Can we bring that back, please?" Like that's yeah, fucking right. hilarious, dude. Yeah, like, that's what I'm talking about. They need yeah. to let you run free a little bit with that kind of stuff. And you know, I, I will give Especially it to Lucio. The Lucio, I think, had the best moment last year. Uh, October, September was when the Dahmer series hit Netflix, so that was that was huge then. Um, and fucking talking to Lucio in character as the clown, it was. Oh, it was it was it was a whole thing of its own, but <laughs> talking to Lucille mid character as the clown and then someone coming in disrupting him. Mind you, this kid had blonde hair and was wearing Jeffrey Dahmer glasses. He literally looked at the kid. He's like, "What the hell out of here, Dahmer?" <laughs> and fucking walked away. And I was like, "I'm gonna walk away before you get in trouble." <laughs> See, that shouldn't be a fear, man. You shouldn't be fearful of getting people in trouble for that. Like it's yeah. terrible. Like I and I, I would wish Knox would back you back people up more on that, but. I mean, I don't think he said listen, hell, but he he made a Dahmer joke, which was funny. Well, sure, whatever, yeah. say hell. Like, what's it gonna what's it gonna hurt? Like, yeah. who's being affected by that? So you're I'm just saying. A, a I'm just saying. If, if anyone watches this, scary. if anyone watches this, and it's just protecting Lucio, <laughs> I don't think he said hell. Oh well, sure. That's I don't think he would care anyway. But he might own up to it. <laughs> you're coming to an event where there's blood, gore, and scaring. Yep. I, you're telling me with those three things in play, you're going to be traumatized because people called you a bitch. <laughs> Like that's what's going to give you PTSD, not the gore or the guts or the scares. Yeah, because what's when I, the old adage? Uh, sticks and stones. Right, <laughs> dude. I mean, I'm I I cringe when I watch a saw movie, and when I went to the fucking maze, I was like, this is worse in person than it is yeah. on film. Because that's awesome. That they yeah, can and it that and that's way, how I want to feel. Like I need to feel that uncomfortability because that's what horror and all this stuff is is supposed to make you feel. It's a sense of uncomfortability. If yeah. you don't feel com- if you don't feel com- if you feel comfortable in a horror movie, then you might want to go see a therapist. However, <laughs> if you don't if you feel uncomfortable at certain scenes of like gore or something, then that's what horror is supposed to make you feel. You're supposed to feel that way. So going to yeah. a haunt, I want to feel that way. I want to feel uncomfortable walking out, and be like, damn, that shit was dope, but that shit fucking that shit was gory. Man, I remember a couple years going to haunt when I was younger, where like you walk in and like. The first 10 minutes of someone walking to a Halloween event is just like, dude, it's like putty in your hands. Like these people are just like hyper aware of everything, looking over their shoulder, not knowing what to expect. That's why I loved Scary to Main Gate. Like the, you, if you're the first person to hit them and set the fucking tone for the night, incredible. Yeah. But I remember a couple of years I would go and a lot of people get desensitized maybe an hour into it because now you really aren't – there's no – there is places to hide. It's not like back in the day where there was monsters everywhere in the fucking bathroom, yeah, in the trees. Yeah. Like, and those are places I used to hide because I understood that that is going to get an oh shit moment out of somebody. I used to love it too. When uh, I remember when I went in 2008, when the Calico stage was actually in Calico um, mm-hmm. for the hanging, we were just chilling, watching, and there was monsters running in the crowd. I was like, Oh yeah, oh, we need dude, this that, again. That's where they used to do the uh, the, the pre show Slider shows. No, but yeah. it was – they. I don't think they were doing a slider show at the time. There was just, Oh, actually, no, they did do a slider show. But there was just a, one guy, it was, I, and I remember him vividly because he fucking – he stood out. He was just going crazy. Like, his fucking – he was just moving crazy and shit. And I was like – I was actually kind of laughing. Hey, mind you, I was fucking young, and I was scared shitless. But I remember at that moment I was laughing at that because I was like, that's fucking funny, dude. Like, Yeah, that was a nightly occurrence, dude. Yeah. The hanging crowd is a free second rope drop, <laughs> He would basically. like He would, like, fucking dip into the crowd, right? And then you wouldn't see him, and then he'd be on the other side just like, yep. And then yeah. just fucking doing stupid shit. I'd be like, this yeah. is great, dude. They need to incorporate this again. I miss that being a ghost town. I miss the Hane Sage being a ghost Yeah, I miss reason. them doing the That's... Slider Show. So the Slider Show was kind of like, um, like a, a starting band at a concert. You know, they're the ones that get the crowd hyped up and ready to go. And then the hanging mm-hmm. starts, and the crowd's there. You know what I mean? See, so that's another thing where we have alignment on. The age, they should bring back Slider Shows. Because I think that's a unique thing that Knotts needs to showcase. Yeah. And B... Uh, and, and individually per zone too, uh, and, and B they they really need to bring back the hanging, and they really need a they really need to harp on the uh, inappropriateness of it because they need 
that is like the marquee show at Haunt. Like they yeah. need to bring that that's, back. That's why they took it away because people were getting too offended. I'm like, oh, yeah, God, I can't do dude. shit. Like, like, I'm like, <laughs> but and don't get me wrong, I love this show too, and I, I hope it doesn't leave because of people getting offended. But Puppet Up's the same exact shit. It, it literally, For sure. it's all comedy, and they're fucking. They advise in the beginning, it's uncensored, so they're gonna say shit that's gonna be offensive. But yeah. it's that's comedy. I, I'm sorry, they that's should comedy. leave that with at the hanging with the 18 and over ticket at, at like advisory and what are they going to do get uh, emails and complaints just put that shit in the trash can like you're not you're not fucking up any laws so like yes it, in terms of haunt in some ways bad publicity is good publicity if someone says oh i got offended at this place or it's too fucking scary yeah come see the world's scariest halloween event yeah. as said by this person on instagram yeah like Use that to your advantage. Turn it into yeah. a marketing tactic, right? Absolutely. Let me, let I me... would be reposting that person. Oh, yeah. Fucking putting like, that free on... tickets if you want to come back. No, yeah, <laughs> like posting that like how they do like uh, like movie reviews. Like so-and-so said this is, this movie is the best thing since fucking the return of cinema. You know, like yeah, when yeah, trailers yeah. come, you get all those. That would be cool. Yeah. Um, let me drop some statistics on you, too. 2021. 20, I went to Six Flags Fright Fest for the very first time. Uh, never been. Uh, was welcomed with open arms with the the fun, amazing, wacky yeah. g- clowns they have there. The, the, some of the best blue crown, green clown, pink clown. Yeah, they're great. Great slaughter show, too. The freaking, yeah. I, I'm i still friends with the uh, um, the Exile Brothers, which was blue crown, pink clown. I'm still friends with Blaze. They have all told me that within all the parks that was taking on Fright Fest in the country, that their slider show was rated number one out of all the parks. And that does not shock me at that all. That statistic right, right there tells me that Knots should be incorporating this shit because they could be that fucking park to be like, this mm-hmm. is the best. Not to mention, this is the birthplace of sliding. Why wouldn't you capitalize on a sliding show? So I, this is this is me playing devil devil's advocate. Yeah. I might, um, we might have been about to say the same thing. All right, I'll uh, I, I, I love the slider show. The issue with Haunt, is is the drama that comes with it and the egos that are yeah that get kind of everyone will want to be in that show so you every get a, single person every single person that slides so, be, well, why is this person in the show and i'm not in the business. show it is oh, business in the end of the day the there's a so-and-so it's business in the end yeah. of the day that you got to get someone that no matter what if you're friends with them or not you're gonna do what's good for the show and not for that person well, so and here's here's my kind of way around that is when you're when you're doing like the slider test, have a separate little audition. Be like, hey, we're gonna do a slider show. You need to hit this, this, and this. Do it right now, and then we'll work on this. Like, like to see if you qualify. Like, have a little mini tryout. You know. I also think they need to put an age restriction on it, and no one under seven years can do it. That way, it's just a hard line of if you're not seven years or more on streets, you can't do it. You know, or seven years or whatever, five years or more of street sliding. I would say five would be a number. Five is a reasonable. Or, yeah, one. whatever the number is that they agree on. But there needs to be a hard line to where all these new people can't be like, oh, what the fuck? Why is this person get it? And I don't. That's also yeah. on management to also really pay attention to people in their zones if they're planning on doing that to see who would be a strong fit for that and who would not. Well, I mean, that, right. that's how it used to be for streets, right? Like before uh, Cedar Fair bought knots, like when when Craig and Ian were still there, like you had that. That five year in the mazes rule. Yeah, that the the ending of that was 2011. I think the year before I auditioned, okay. it was uh, you could audition for streets. Uh, but they also had slide the last slider show in in haunt was in Ghost Town in 2012, and I was a part of it. I got the opportunity to slide in the show, and which was a great memory for me. Probably one of my most cherished haunt memories was sliding in that slider show. But it was like a known thing. That the slider show was the regulators. They put it together. They're the high end vets. They asked you to be in the show if they wanted you to be in the show, but everyone respected them. And I don't know if you're gonna have that same effect this year or if they did that again just because you said kind of like it's a everyone assumes a hierarchy, everyone assumes a drama, everyone assumes favoritism. All right. <laughs> uh, but I think if you put a hard line at like five years or more, we can only have this many people in the show. Uh maybe if you do the show. The next year, you're not going to be in the show. Uh-huh. Like maybe it's an every that other year thing. Like opportunities if you do... to do it. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Um, and maybe you made someone put in the reward. Hey, like if you didn't, if you didn't get picked, or let's say you're a fourth year monster, you've been sliding for four years, and you want to be in the show next year. That's great. You're going to be laying down for the stunts. You're going to be holding the limbo sticks. 
that's what you're going to be doing. And you can be in the show next year if you that's pass like, the test. How they learn the show and they learn like what's expected of them. Right. Not to mention, you could even doing that, you could still be in character and still hype up the crowd and get everyone ready. You still Dude, be that's, a big involvement of the show. That's That was 90% of the – and if you weren't sliding in that trick, that's what all the monsters do. When I was in the Slider show, you're hyping everyone up. You get yeah. the crowd going. You're standing there kind of as a barrier between the guests and the and the runway. Yeah. Like – these are all important things, you know. Um, but I think if you make the show a tight six, seven minutes, basic tricks, like you're not trying to break jumping records, you're just doing a basic like three person jump, do some limbo, do a couple freestyle, call it, you know, nothing too crazy. I think that'll eliminate the egos too, because then it's kind of like, well, you don't have this person trying to jump eight people and set a record and be the person, you know, it's it's yeah. a show. You know, it's just boom, for entertainment. Boom, boom. We're here to entertain the guests, not entertain ourselves right, right now, you know. You could have the people that choreograph stunts for like the hanging or whatever be the person, people that put the show together. That way, there's really no favoritism in the sense of who's running it. Uh -huh. But you're right. I do think Knotts needs to bring that slider show back, but I think it does need to be regulated, like Vince said, to avoid. Now, that being said, where would you put it in today's state of Knotts? Uh, uh, Silver Bullet. Yeah, that'd be a good. Place. Probably the best terrain to slide on. Is it? In my opinion. My favorite place to ever well, slide. I, and I've I slid tell you for sure, Aaron. They repaved it last year. Oh, did they? Oh, well, I don't know then. <laughs> I, in my time there, the best place to slide in the whole park, because I've slid in the whole park. I've slid in Boardwalk. I've slid in Camp. I've slid in Fiesta. I've slid everywhere. The best place to slide, not legally, but I have. <laughs> the best place to slide, in my opinion, was Silver Bullet by, by a long shot. <laughs> I, I love how you had to make it a notice. That, not legally. Yeah, I, I did a couple. Around uh, the world? You know. Yeah, I did. I did a couple of guest appearances, but uh, <laughs> certainly, yeah, one of the best places to slide was Silver Bullet, and it pains me to hear that they repaid it because it was. I've heard a lot of different places from different people. A lot of people also told me CS was the best place to slide. CS is good in some spots. I, I haven't explored every inch of the park, obviously, but right. uh, CS it, it has some good spots. Uh, that cobblestone that's in uh, Fiesta Village or the small like uh, pebbles that that kind of shit you fly on. Uh, -huh. uh, but you can have a, you have a high propensity of getting your uh, if I wear fingerless gloves, getting your fingers yeah. caught in the grooves of those pebbles, and right. it hurts. Uh, see, I would, want to. I would put it back in front of the in front of the train station over in Calico Square. That could be good. Because I, I the if only... I do that, I put it in front of the hanging crowd because I feel like that's the largest area, and you're attracting for the show. Don't they have that uh that like turf down or whatever? Though. Oh, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, Is that got, a thing? They got turf down there. Yeah, so um, they have like turf. Like, they kind of make it. They okay. kind of made it look like like a picnic kind of area. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Uh, what about between the train tracks and like between that and the train tracks? I'm just trying to think where there's the most room like right in front of uh, the mine ride. Uh, yeah, like somewhere in that gap where the mine ride curves to the side and yeah, you know, walk toward the hanging stage. Yeah, that's that seems good. to be the largest area. Because in front of uh, in Calico Park, it's I mean it's big, but it, like those I, hanging well, crowds I, I were big. If you if you maybe move some of like the picnic tables and stuff, you might have a little more room. And like, yeah, I don't know because I mean they have a little like mini stage there. Like why not make it a little show moment with like you know whoever the icon is that year? Yeah, put them on the mic. Like let them. Yeah, I would a hundred percent let people get involved in that and make it a make it a thing for five to seven minutes. You know, and, there's another thing uh, I want to add to that. Knotts needs to start bringing back icons again. I I don't get me wrong, the train conductor. Well, who else are they gonna do besides the Green Witch? That's kind of I mean, like the you, thing. They, they, you know? didn't, didn't they do one where they had like fucking like some of the fucking de the deadly sins too one year? Yeah, well, yeah, it was yeah. The Green Witch though. Right, but I'm saying like conceptually, like what would make more sense than the Green Witch? I mean that that makes sense as an overall theme, but like have something else that spawned from the Green Witch that's just as powerful and that works with her or something. Like do a story based around that. Yeah, you know I, I mean? I'm like, with you. I, I'm not yeah, disagreeing. Yeah. I'm just no, yeah. I'm just, like uh, I'm just saying, arguing like, your opinion. Let's 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 try to do an icon again because I think that's what really you had the the train conductor I, last year which it, it was a really cool opening but to me the most memorable opening since I've been going as a fan uh was easily I I really I used to like the Johnny Cash stuff but I did like 2019's opening a lot too which was what 
Uh, that was them. That was it when was they the were doing the origin story. Up audio. Yeah, the origin When story. they were like, you liked that? <laughs> I did because I knew when I heard that noise that it was time to start haunt. Okay, because so, I saw clips of Morty going, hoo, hoo, hoo. yeah, like, that was like, this is not him, dude. <laughs> like, it was cool after the fact of when they were starting to walk down. That's always the coolest part to me. But like that I, audio, I just, I, I think we remember it so much because we went almost every night. So <laughs> I, I liked the Green Witches openings. I really liked the Overlord. Overlord, yeah, I do. Showed up that. over Ghost Rider entrance, yeah. or uh, it was the Geode Shop. Yes, but top like, of the Ghost Rider entrance. Yeah, yeah, I, I love that. Like seeing seeing that as a guest, I was like, "What's happening? Why is there a person over there?" Here's the thing that Knots lacks, and this isn't to their own fault. It's just the way of the land. Knots dimensionally, the park is not set up for a very theatric rope drop. Uh, you're gonna have it's it's a narrow gap of people that they put in front of Wagon Camp, and like it's not any intro you do isn't really gonna cater to the masses unless you're in the front couple rows. Mm-hmm. As opposed to Horror Nights, where you have the room to lo- like put load those people in and have a big dramatic opening. And they do. And it's awesome. I think that in my in my time there, the Ain't No Grave intro was the sickest intro. Because yeah. it really fired up the crowd. You could play that over the speakers with the witch thing. And it kind of let the crowd in the back that couldn't see know that something's happening. I know that when that when we did that in 2018... Because that was my last year, 2016, they started that. And I think that was sick. In 2018, they dabbled with having that be Hell's Bells by ACDC. Oh, and so I good. watched that. I watched that as a practice run. Like, they had a couple different tracks that we were doing. And me and some of the other cast leads were, like, practicing the timing of walking. And the Hell's Bells thing was sick. And the idea was right when the, like, you were going to start walking when the first get, uh, drum Dun. kit started. Dun, dun, dun. And then when the rope dropped at the at the breakdown of it. They were going to drop the rope, and they were going to put fire on top of the hotel building that would oh, go dude. out awesome. and start the event and put fire in front on top of the knot sign, the park entrance, of, that would have been and dope. have it all go off. And uh, Not since I, a flame I, tower. I, yes, I think that would be, that would be great. Yeah. That would um, be but, I, again, I, 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 that's not really conveying a story like you're saying, Anthony. I mean, maybe you have a witch speech in there or something. But well, it's sound intimidating. I don't know what it was my year, but it was something like, I don't know, let the night begin or some shit. But I remember in like 2008 going and actually like seeing the witch and she's making her big speech and everything. And like, I liked seeing, I think it was 08. Yeah. 08 was the overlord. Overlord. It was someone. I don't remember. I remember seeing someone. 12. It was 12. It was probably 12. Then I saw it then because I did go in 12. Um. I Those just remember, yeah, I just remember seeing that and just like fucking just kind of like that whole because, you know, what was cool is is I, I like that's what I like from Horror Nights. Horror Nights does a really good opening ceremony. I don't know if they have done it in they the do. last two years, but like that kind of especially like don't get me wrong. I didn't like every year that we had either walking out of the purge, but like when they did the purge as the opening ceremony, oh, that it was a party. It, it, it yeah. got me hyped yeah. because like you heard that siren going, you think of the movie, and you're like, oh, shit, when that siren goes. All crime is legal. Let's fucking go. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. when I heard that, that got me hyped. So I need something on that level where, like, it's cool. Like, I love every time I get hyped when I see you guys walking down the fog. Like, that's already telling me right there, like, it's fucking Man. game time. If, if behind the mask on that is I imagine, because you, you awesome. know, we're, we're all looking at you guys, and we're getting excited. Now you're looking at, like, hundreds of us, you know, in that crowd, and you guys are like, oh, fuck. Like, here we go. It's, it's game time. Yeah, Aaron, do you prefer to walk down Fog Alley or would you walk down uh, Market? I walked down Fog Alley. My, I wanted to be the first person people saw. They put Totem and Antho and all these people up front because they were bigger and intimidating. I would walk ahead of them. I wanted to, one of my favorite photos is me opening night of haunt, and they told us, "Oh, like these guys are walking the front. We're gonna kind of do a V formation." I were in right out in front of them, and one of my favorite photos is all of us lined up with the witch. And everyone's sitting there ready. And I'm like midair in a jump, like fucking just jumping up and down, ready to go. Um, it sounds like you came through Market, though. Yeah, I, I preferred to come through Market. Okay. Only and because you came I, through by the pizza shop. Yeah, because I, yeah. I didn't want to deal with the ego of, of being in front and whatever. And I just like, no one else was over there. The, the way that I looked at it was like, I didn't want to have to deal with anyone like, oh, I want to be in front on fog. And I'm like, I'm like the only slider on market. So 
everyone's going to be looking at me. Like, mm-hmm. I it's like you got your own spotlight. Yeah, it's it's literally like like untapped potential right there just to run through and and cause chaos. And that's great. That's a good see. That's a good. That, that's that's a monster mentality right there. That's what that to, to recognize that and then to jump on that opportunity. I was just like, I'm gonna be in front, and if they don't like it, they can tell me to fuck off. But I'm gonna do it. <laughs> you know that that was I was a stealing the spotlight, I guess, kind of person <laughs> in some ways, but um, or fight me for it. I guess is the type of mentality <laughs> yeah. I had. Take fight it me, from me, me, you know. <laughs> um, faster than me. Right. Exactly. But I do, I do like the Halloween ho- or the the Horror Nights opening ceremony. I, I, they should. I have a bunch of ideas of the ways I wish Han would open their event. I also have a bunch of ideas and ways that I would specifically change and run Ghost Town in ways that haven't been done yet that I would like to incorporate. That I've spoken with Wyatt at great lengths about because we'd like to cast lead, co cast lead together. Um, give, give, I have us, give us a teaser. Give us like one thing that you. I don't want to give ideas away. It first off, b- before anything, it's conceptual, and and none of this happens if you don't have buy-in with your talent. Yeah, I would hope that I would be a type of casting where a lot of people would say, "This is Aaron. We know who he is, or we can see the passion in him. He wants to guide us. Let's like this is a guy that I can hitch my wagon to, who gives a fuck about us and gives a fuck about this place." I would hope that first and foremost that is conveyed. Um. I know in Paranormal, they saw that immediately. They were like, this is a guy that will ride for us, so let's ride for him. So, it, it, one, it's the buy-in, right? If I can get the buy-in from people, that's something, first and foremost, I want to do. Then we're all in. Right. So, if I can get the buy-in, like, I want to do things like, uh, like for example, right? Like, t- to me, motivation and inspiration is going to be what drives you. So, mm-hmm. uh, one thing I would do is, like, uh, every night, maybe the... Uh, the, the cast leads pick out from the night before who was the who was the standout talent. Someone that they saw do something sick. And what I would like to do is have us all, you know, get ready. I want to get your shit together. If you're if you're if you're an opening night person, I want you to be ready to go. We're gonna meet at the tent at Ghost Town, and whoever is the best monster from the night before, I have this I have this giant fucking boombox. Whoever's the best monster from the night before gets to pick a walkout song. I don't care who, what it is, make it appropriate. We're playing that on the speaker, and we're walking from the tent to A2 gate as a group. That's we're awesome. getting ready to go. I'm leading you guys out of the tunnel to game time. And through that walk, you guys need to be locked in. Listen to this music. Get fired up. Because by the time we hit that gate, I need you to be in game time mode. I need you to be ready to go. I'm like, then I don't fucking meander over. throw on Ride the Lightning and throw on For Whom the Bell Tolls, and we're good. Yeah. Yeah, if you if you if you're picked, it's your song. Let's make it appropriate. I'm playing this shit, and we're walking you out of the tunnel. It's game time. By the time you hit the field, you should be already primed and ready to go. Your blood should be boiling. <laughs> I would choose stupid songs just to be a dick. And that's fine if you want to do that. If that I'm like bump you up, Barbie girl right fucking now. Everyone get hyped. That's fine. But another thing, another reason for that too is like it's no one does that. Yeah. And yes, I want to have other mazes, other scare zones watching us do this and go, man, they're fucking. They're I want to be a part of that. Yeah. These guys are locked in. I'm jealous of these guys. They are getting yeah. ready to go. They care. They're castly cares. These guys, I want to be a part of that party. And that's going to furthermore build up Ghost Town to what I think it always should be, which is like the best, most desirable zone because it's Ghost Town. Um, but li- that's just a very tiny example of something I would love to do on Ghost Town uh, to, to change things. I mean, I'm, I'm a coach, dude. Like me and Wyatt – like we're gonna be dressed like football coaches. We're gonna buy like the over ear like uh, headsets. Have we're the big have Bose whistles. logo on the side. Yeah. I'm gonna have a, a clipboard with all your guys' names on it and a schematic of Ghost Town to watch you guys scare. I'm gonna be locked in, dude. I'm gonna be pulling people to the be, side, he's showing be folding him. the arms with the chewing the gum. Yeah, <laughs> throw my clipboard, yelling at the fucking security guards, like, "Are you kidding me? <laughs> fucking go drop this person!" That was a whatever. penalty. Right. And that that's like legitimately that's how I'm gonna lead. Yeah, I don't want to be a called a boss or a manager. I want to be a coach. And I think I have a little bit. One to one thing. I, there's one story I want to tell before uh, we start to wrap up because I'm getting fucking sleepy. <laughs> that's just me getting old now. No, you're fine. It's midnight um, for me, so don't worry. Oh about yeah, that's true. You you're two hours ahead. Um, one of the things I wish I could have done with you, Aaron, is something that I did with the Exile Brothers that we. If you look on my Instagram, you can find it. I. Brought the idea to them because I they're much like you in the sense of scaring. 
of they're mm-hmm. there to have a good time. I think you and them would fucking you'd be like the dream team. You know, I've never met them. I would love to meet them. Yeah, I would love to be on a podcast with them or something. Dude, I, I would like to meet these guys. I, I think you guys would be the dream team. If you if you go back and look at some of our 2021 Six Flags coverage, man, these guys are fucking out there. Uh, and I, I fucking love it. Um, but I, there was one night I was like, you know what? I want to see how much these guys can get away with. And they got, they can get away with a lot there. Uh, uh, so I bought penalty flags on Amazon and I said, listen, I bought these penalty flags for you guys. I don't care what you do with them, but please just, if you can do something funny and let's film something great tonight. They're like, we got you. Mm-hmm. So I met up with them at a restaurant down the street from six flags before the event started, handed them the flags then the night came, and uh, I met up with them, and they saw me. They're like, all right, we're going to get the flags. Uh, it says, stay put. I was like, all right, cool. Because they their scare tactic is they scare with a whistle, which I think is the mm. most genius thing to do to save your voice, and that's why they do it. So they don't got to mm. yell anything. You use the whistle again. Loud noises scares people. They come out, whistle. They're already wearing, they're already wearing stripes on their things, like blue and black stripes, pink and uh, black stripes, you know, green and black stripes. They're already looking like referees. They got their whistle. <laughs> They throw the flags, man. The calls they are calling, <laughs> it was just some of the most insane shit. Like he, like this, they let they they get to take pictures with guests there. And one kid had like this camera and his phone it was all messed up, and literally was like, "That's a penalty. The freaking photo looks blurry. Get a new phone." <laughs> and like he's like, "That's a penalty. The lasers. You didn't jump higher than the lasers. Jump higher than the lay." There was like physically impossible to do and shit. And yeah. I was like, I, just the shit they would come up with on the spot. I was like, Aaron would fucking have a field day with. I, w- I would love to sit down and talk to them on a podcast and just exchange stories. Yeah. I-, I would love that. I've never talked to anyone from Fright Fest. I have zero connections there. I would love to talk. Like genuinely, if you ever set that up, I would love to talk and just exchange stories with these guys. Because I'm a big fan of them and what they do. Um, have Nate- you? Like, Nate will be an easy one to get. I got to see about Matt. Matt lives in another state too right now. So Matt well, either one of them. I would just. I'm a big fan. Yeah. I would love to meet them and talk to them and exchange stories. Uh, because I have a treasure trove of them that I I haven't even talked about. That I'm sure they do too. Have you by chance? Have you ever spoken to? Uh, ah, fuck. What's his name? He's a clown at that event. He's like pretty well well received online in terms of following. Uh, I do know who you're not, talking about. I just would not like to say his name was he not well liked i don't know i don't know anything about these people that's how you stuff off sounds fine um <laughs> my friend is a big fan of this guy he's like dude this guy's sick but i think it's it's uh it's not character. genuine yes looks like he does his own makeup too no he doesn't or somebody he knows like his, it's a custom his, character his girlfriend does his own makeup for yes him. we're talking about the same person yes. okay great I was just curious if you ever encountered that guy or um, what everyone's. I have. <laughs> I have. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't sound like a nice dude. Uh, um, <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. I did it. I yeah, did it. yeah, no, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, There's people. Yeah. yeah. It, I'm, just, happens, I'm, just, I'm just holding myself back is all. That's it. I'm being a good That's boy. fine. Well, yeah, I would like to talk to these people. Um, and, Anthony, I will say, man, if there ever was a time where I am a Cassie again, you absolutely have VIP access to anything you want to film or anything you want to do or any maze you want to go through. I will help you get that or go through it. Um, Thank you, brother. Because Appreciate if you're, it. hey, if I get allowed to cast lead something, like you're, you're a good person if you use favors to help other people. Yeah. And I would absolutely do that for you. I wish I would have known you in 2018. I would have bad doored you in a paranormal all night. I would have shown you the bad stage. I would have let you hit the air cannons. I would have let you do whatever you want. Um, <laughs> Because you guys are fans, man. Like those are the things that you want to see. So hell yeah, man. Uh, if I ever have the opportunity to be a Cassidy again, one, I want Vincent to be there as one of my monsters if he's not already a management. Uh, and uh, those are things I want to implement, Vincent. You You'll be I, one of those. You people. and I will probably have right. strolls in Ghost Town all night if you're on Ghost Town Cassidy. We'll just have strolls and walk and talk. And oh, I'll sit you down and be like, hey, yeah. man, like let's watch these people. Like, I'll show you my method of how I observe. Yeah, take him up to the uh, the hotel for. Uh... Do you want to go up there? Of Dude, I want, to go up. I want to go up there. Have you never been up there? You haven't jumped the stairs and gone up there? No. No. Oh. Yeah, I mean, you, I mean, you <laughs> said there, you haven't jumped have, the stairs and I gone up there? To, I have much to do in Ghost Town. Oh, yeah. You're, you still have unfinished business. People ask me all the time why I only retired after five years. I did a lot in those. I did everything I wanted to do in those five years. I did. I had the party. But there's always something to, to do that's new. So um, there's one person I, would, I say. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. 
I, I was just quickly, I was just to say, Vincent, I need you to be there as a talent because you're, you're at that point, you will be a veteran veteran. And oh, yes, <laughs> I need people like you to lead the buy-in because if the vets are if bought in, vet. right. It's, it disseminates yeah. downward. The right. So, right. Yep. Go ahead, Anthony. Sorry. I will say there's one person that I do miss at haunt that I had a lot of great interactions with in 2019 and the last two years, she just, it's cause she's moved out of state. Um, she was a sweetheart to me and still continues to be, and we still talk a lot um, every now and then. Uh, I miss Ruth. I really do. I I, oh, I, yes. I I definitely had a lot of fun with that character she brought to the table, the orphan, um, mm-hmm. and the things she would do and, and the stuff she would do. The interaction she would have with other people was just some of the funniest things ever. And, like, I don't know. There was just that – there was just – you know, I, everyone that I knew in Ghost Town was there, and I was like, "This is fun," but there's just that one thing that was missing for me, and it was her. And I've, and I've, her, ex- I've expressed her sister that rips, her. dude. Oh, uh, don't get me wrong. Yeah, her sister. Her sister is fucking, rips as the teacher. Yeah, her sister is she's sick. fucking badass as the teacher. Um, yeah, I always say if they're gonna cast a new Green Witch, I think Leash would be like perfect for. Yeah. I agree. I, I agree with that. Yeah. That would be a good casting call. That's a that's a big stepping stone for her, but I think she has. I think she has the work. She's put in the work to prove that she can do it. Definitely. I have a, my my buddy James and I. James is someone that, I, I, I man, it uh, it I, he's someone that I want to get on like Lucio's pot. If I put me him and like like Wyatt in a room That's together, a six hour podcast, dog with the shit. <laughs> Not kidding, man. I have a total side note. I have a video. I have a photo of him, a, a screenshot from a YouTube video that some kid took of him going up. And the kid's just like, hi. And James walks up to this guy, grabs his, on video, grabs his hand, spits in his hand, and flips off the camera and walks away. And I have the <laughs> screenshot of him doing this and fog alley to the kid. It's the best. Oh, and James man. never got in trouble. He just did three years on Ghost Town. We partied together. He's That's one of my funny. best friends. Um, oh, but I, uh, I, I say all that to say that I have a running joke with Pasta. He has a running joke with Pasta that the year that there was no bride, we went into audition. And uh, he asked if he could audition as the bride, and Pasta let him do it. And she was like, the, the dress won't fit you, but if you lose weight, we could do this. And he's lost weight since. And every year he hits up Pasta being like, is the bride spot open? Because I'll come do it for a night. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, I'll, always, I'll let you know if it ever if Oh, ever that would be so great, dude. <laughs> dude, if James <laughs> – oh. he would be the shittiest bride. But it would be <laughs> so funny, dude. Like – it would be top notch comedy. I have video, Anthony. I I gotta. Uh, you gotta. I mean, I have stuff I need to upload to YouTube privately and send you links. Cause I have video on my computer of me and him doing shit, throwing candy at people's heads, yelling cavities and shit. Like, we we uh, there are things that we've done that I have on I, video. That, I can't promise that I won't show other people privately, but oh, that's fine. I don't care about that. I just don't want it being like I no, want people like, watching I'm, it and being like, oh, this is not. No, I'm I'm talking like I'll probably send it to Sammy to like, look at this. And oh, I don't good. care about that. Yeah, and there's some good scaring on these videos, man. I I gotta I gotta show you some stuff. I uploaded some stuff to my private YouTube page. Hey, whenever you want to make the Aaron Frame story documentary, you just come straight to me and we'll. we'll it would be a it would be an interesting one. It a would lot be, of people would be like, this it would guy. be an honor and a privilege <laughs> to make that. Listen, story. I'll do it if uh, Vincent plays me because he looks better than me and he's taller. <laughs> Vincent's Vincent's playing you in the biopic. Yeah, yeah but, biopic? Vincent would be me. We gotta grow his hair out to a mullet a little bit more, but diet I think we a little, could probably dye it dye it a little bit to get it to that year color and. Uh, yeah, I, I'll go blonde for you, Aaron. Thank you, Vincent. I, I see. I appreciate that. Vincent's such a good guy, man. Vince is one of those people that came up to me my last night and was just like, "Man, it was so good to have you guys back and see you guys here." And I just appreciate you. Because it, it like, it's I like I told you like me coming as a guest, like seeing kind because of, like my what I, what I equate to like the core of like my Knots experience was like watching you, Wyatt, Vi, Art, Lucio. Uh, you know, just pretty much like the entire like royalty group, like go out there and, and just kind of, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? And pictures like, I took at haunt that night that after, right after we took that picture, you're like, all right, one, two, three, royalty. <laughs> and then they all left. <laughs> yeah. But like, like, so kind of, cause I, my, I turned, I was able to work haunt in 2016, which I, I think was like your guys's last, like that real, was my last year. Yeah. It was your last year. And I, I, 
couldn't because I was going to school at the time. And like, it never, it had never worked out until 2018 where I finally like had a, I was at a point in my life where I was like, all right, cool. Like I can do this. Mm -hmm. And so like kind of missing that window to like, be able to like kind of go out there and like hang out with you guys and like, and, and scare with you. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like, oh dude, like this sucks. But then when like you guys came back, I was like, oh dude, like this was everything that like I wanted haunt to be like when I worked here and it was like, it was just, it was missing something. Mm -hmm. And then you guys came back and you guys like filled that void. And I think now we're at a point where like you, by you guys coming back, it showed a lot of the new people that like had again, like me, like joined knots at a time where like there wasn't a party. It showed people that there could be a party and like Mm -hmm. knots could be fun and you could get away with stuff. And it didn't have to be like super, super serious a hundred percent of the time mm-hmm. so like it you, like you guys have a bigger impact on like knots than like you might think well thank you i that i mean man that's that's as much as i could ever ask for i don't i don't i mean i want to be remembered for the things i did and like the positivity in the party you know and and that means a lot to me and i'll tell why i mean they're all gonna think that same thing dude like we I, I, and 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 hearing it a come from great monsters like yourself means a lot because that means we inspired someone to be even you know amazing you know and it's it's your own talent of course but like to be any sort of like inspiration behind that is more than we can ever ask for and because that's why i do it i do it for the guests like i do it so you guys are like this is sick that's what matters to me above well, all that's how you grow the event right because like the, right. the guests are going to come and they be oh dude that's so cool i want to do that right and that's what that's what all we tried to do and translate that through staring in the parties that we had and like going back in 2021 was so weird to me because it was like kind of going back to your high school after you've graduated and trying to do the things that, and i don't know if they were well received or not but like you know me like it, anytime me and wyatt and vi were walking on break to our bots and we passed by the tent we made it a point to walk into that tent and like shake three people's hands and be like yo yeah. you're doing great tonight dude dude you're killing it i like that you did this like keep it up and that's that's and we those were genuine compliments like we want people to feel a part of the team because when we were with ghost town it was a family and now i feel like it's it's like you said missing something um now if we could contribute anything by our one year doing that come back and retiring then i'm happy to do it i will say i appreciated you coming up to me i had people like jason wood coming up to me showing me a photo of him and i my first year at knots <laughs> He was like, dude, I have a photo of you as a schoolboy character in 2012. I was a fan of you and Wyatt, and I came and visited. And I'm like, that's fucking surreal to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's weird. Because now I feel like an old guy, and I don't feel like it, but, like, I am, I guess. And Time I just flies. don't feel like a vet. Time flies when you have fun. I guess, dude. I I, I just I, – I super appreciate that stuff and people telling me, like, we used to watch you and, like, you're, I'm not tooting my own horn. I'm just quoting people, you know, saying like, we used to watch you and we used to be fans of you and Wyatt on YouTube. And like, it's so weird to see you here again. And we never thought we'd have you back here. And, uh, you know, Pasta telling me amazing. I mean, me and Pasta tats occasionally. And she's awesome. And she said some great things to me too. And it's, it's good to know that what we, our impact is more than just the scaring, but it's also just like the positivity and the stoke and the party that's really what it is man like this thing's this is an event to have fun and if you translate that to the new people you know john and carter are perfect examples dude i'll say this really quick anthony because i know you want to wrap up no you're good dude i'm chilling um when i met john and carter initially uh i i (laughs) i'll say this now because now we're, we're we're friends but at the time i didn't know these kids right and my interpretation through somebody else was, hey, when you guys moved out, these kids moved in as like the frat group type people, like that you kind of were, these young guns. And I was like, cool, you know, it, that happens. That's just the, the just the maturity of the van. That's yeah. awesome. Like, that's what should happen. There's always going to be um, new people coming in to replace the old ones, you know? Right, right. Um, And Carter, he was a Gore in 20s originally, right? Yeah. Uh, that year? They, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. he he was on Ghost Town my first year, mm-hmm. and then uh, when they opened Goring, you know, like they do with most scare zones, they like to pick, yeah, you know, yeah, good good talent and open up strong. And so yeah, he he started the year out in Goring, and then he transferred to Ghost Town. Yeah. So my first run in with this kid was very funny. We joke about it now, but at the time, man, my 
my first run in, and this was like the second week in a hunt or whenever he transferred over. So I was still getting my sea leads underneath me. And I only worked Fridays and Saturdays. I didn't work Sundays, most Sundays. I didn't work Thursdays. I, did, so I, 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 was only, I remember that. Yeah, I was only there a couple nights a week. Dream yeah. schedule, right? Yeah. Um, didn't clock until seven. It was awesome. Goals. Uh, yeah. Uh, pasta, shout out to her. Uh, but I, I, my interpretation was these kids, like, aren't kind of like are the hot shit and it was like him john i think devin was involved in that uh maybe caleb i, I don't know I, but i didn't feel a way about these guys because that was me when i was young too so i get it i understand you want to prove yourself and be the best tight i'm with it as long as positivity follows that right right that's the big thing um but my first interaction with carter i had never talked to the kid man I was just sitting there getting ready, and where we got ready over on the side, uh, on the other side of the tent, me, it was me, Lucio, Vi, and Wyatt getting ready. And Carter comes up to me and introduces himself. And I was like, hey, man, nice to meet you. I've heard a lot about you. I know you're on the K Brigade. Uh, I'm ex- I'm welcome back to Ghost Town. You know, it's, I'm, I'm excited to have you out there. And uh, his first words to me were, uh, oh, man, it was, uh, it was like, hey, so uh, I feel like you lost a step. And I was like, what? Oh, I mean, probably I'm old now. And he's like, yeah, you know, I, uh, I feel like you feel like you can come out here and just like, uh, run everyone into the ground. Like all these, you know, like, like we haven't been out here doing it. Like you haven't been wow. gone for four years. Like you can just come and step on the territory. And I was like, Hey man, I haven't said that. I'm just here to have a party. And he's like, yeah, well, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what you bring to the table now. And he left and, and Vi looked, and he goes, he does not know what he just did. <laughs> He's like, he just he put just the tugged, battery in your back. You just tugged on the devil's tail right there. Bro, bro. I fucking – Vincent, do you remember the – Do you, I don't know if you remember now, but I, I would wear a weight vest. Yeah. Yeah, so I wore a 25-pound weight vest underneath my costume. And the only reason I did that was because at, at 11 o'clock when all the monsters are getting off or people are tired, I take that weight vest off, and all of a sudden I'm 25 pounds lighter, and I'm flying again out there with a the whole new energy. And I'm the top guy because everyone's tired or leaving. Um, man, I put that weight vest on and I stuck about 10 extra pounds into the weight vest pockets and I just, Vi kicked on some music and he's like, man, it was a Saturday night. He's like, this might be, this might be it. You're leading the party. And I'm like, fucking man, I put up numbers that night. Like I haven't put up since 20, like in a long time, 2014 numbers, dude. <laughs> and, uh, and I grabbed him on one of our breaks. And I was like, yo dude, let's go. Let's run. Like, let's go. This isn't a competition. Like, I want to see what how good you are. I've never seen you scared. Like, let's let's do this. We go out there, we're sliding. He hits a slide. Uh, we're doing a lap, and he's not with us. He hits a slide and right, right in front of wide and by. It was a it was a good slide. Great slide. Uh he's like, Yeah, man, ever seen one do that? Vi's like, I've seen Aaron do that seven times tonight, dude. <laughs> and I'm not speaking for myself. I always let people speak for me. Yeah. But at that point, you know, I, after the night goes, I met him backstage. I was like, Hey man, like no ill will, dude. Like you are the guy, like you might very well be the next guy. I'm old guard. I'm not here to prove anything. I'm here to have a good time, but, uh, I would love to run with you, man. Like I want, I want to see what you and John bring to the table. Like I want to see what that's about. And, uh, they were more receptive to it and we went out, we partied and, uh, you know, I, 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 I kicked it up into sixth gear. A couple times through that night because I knew I needed to. I wanted to be sure I stayed at my edge. Well, I'm just yeah. saying so was, he he tugged on Superman's cape. You don't do that. Yeah, the last thing you want to do with someone who has a sports mentality is put a <laughs> fucking battery in their back. Put a challenge to their table. It's like I, oh. yeah. I was like, man, I've been waiting for this. <laughs> yes, here we go. <laughs> You're like and uh, and and we're cool now. After a couple nights of us rolling together, and I could tell that him and John were giving an extra effort whether to prove something to me or prove something to themselves, whatever. But that extra gear is important. Like, you need to be able to know that you can hit that mm-hmm. on a consistent basis. And if I can bring that out of you, cool. Um, but they up and apologized to me a couple nights later. And he was like, dude, I'm so sorry for coming at you like that. Like, we're, we're cool now. Like, we're friends now. Yeah. There's no ill will. He's a good dude. Uh, and he'll, he'll admit, I, I came at you foul. I shouldn't have done that. Like, that was a dickhead move of me. And, you know, we had some great uh, tag teams throughout the season, and now I see, you know, Vincent. I, I have you guys. I'm sure you guys ran together a couple times. 
Uh, yeah. Uh, John and I have run, run together a couple times. Uh, Carter, not this last year because he was. Uh, he didn't work. Yeah. Yeah, but he was at Hershey Park doing uh, decayed stuff. But like great guys, and you guys. Yeah. I mean, now that I go to the event, right? I see you. Here's what I see, dude. This is from an old, an old head perspective. Just so you know. I go, dude, and I see the young guns, the people that really run that zone from an energy, movement, and intensity perspective. I see you. I see John. I see Dimitri doing his thing. Uh, I see uh, uh, Melissa, to an extent, doing her thing. Uh, I see a lot of you guys. You guys are the next young people. And what was interesting was when we, when we, went, to the, when we went to the banquet, I remember sitting there with Wyatt and Vire. We're talking, and all you guys are – socializing and dancing and having fun and we're just kind of kicking it to the back to ourselves and you're all kind of in your groups laughing and joking and i'm like man that was us <laughs> that was us and now it's not you know the, the new guard has moved in and you guys have successfully made a good niche for yourself so you the should be the torch has that, been man. passed it, it has i appreciate it yeah, dude absolutely and like you're gonna inspire people too just just keep no matter what happens my only advice is keep scares are secondary to or Scares should always be secondary to the positivity and motivation. Like everything you do should be backed up by that and the character yeah. that you convey, right? Like dude, go shake those hands every night, dude. People you don't know. Hey, you want to roll with me? I love what you're doing. I love your character. Gas them Bam, up. give them the letter. <laughs> yeah, yes. And that's a great thing that you do, dude. And and these are just – that's just my old head, like me chiming in to say, hey, you know, this is – just doing good back in the right. dizzy though i, I uh, appreciate it dude absolutely it man and, and keep it up dude i you don't know the joy that was in my heart when vincent would hit me up throughout the season and go hey this is happening or we did this tonight or this and this and i was like i'm living through you dude like uh, this is so sick and when i came uh as a guest man he greeted me with a glow stick in his nose and the pizza bots and i'm like this is it dude like this is that's this awesome. is it. I love Vincent's it, doing it. No, Vincent. And I'm happy about it, that, dude. I, I, I'm. This is why, and and you know, this is why I'm not scared for the future. Honestly, I think that a lot of people will bring some new things to the table, and I think this continue. This event will continue to be better than ever. Um, there's a lot of people that laid the ground foundation for the current generation that a lot of those people are taking to. Uh, the next level today you know and, and it's great to see that a lot of the old style is still there but you know you're mixing it in with some of the new style and it's kind of frankensteining them both and, and kind of creating their own style you know so i i as a fan i love seeing it um and a, as a person who is constantly behind the camera capturing it I, I love to see what i can capture and and grab and and cherish forever because it's something that i on the nights or on the days where I'm just like off season and I'm bored, I just I pull up my haunt footage and I just start watching shit. Yeah. Like you don't know how many times I've laughed at the same fucking jokes because e even though I know they're coming and I know what they're gonna say, like it still fucking cracks me up. You know, that's so. it. Please, as my last piece of advice, you as an old man, please f take your time to film shit backstage and take photos of you guys backstage because those are memories that'll last you forever. And those are things that I some of those things I wish I had filmed because. In 20 years, you're going to look back at that and be like, man, that was funny as fuck. Like, that was, yep. Dude, that was cool. I think my biggest issue right now is, like, not having footage of, of like, me scaring. And it, it's just so that, like, I have something to look back on. Yeah. Is that, like, I move too fucking fast. It's not <laughs> like, a bad problem to have, some, man. I can see pretty good no, shots it's, of you. It's not a bad like, problem to have, but, like. Like I'll have my girlfriend like try and like follow me or whatever. And she's like, I cannot keep up with you because every time I like am ready to film, you're 20 feet away from me. That was the glory of Silver Bullet is someone could just post up and we could just lap the area and it was big and lit up enough where they could just wide angle that thing and just. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, dude, film as much as you can, man, because those will be memories that will last you forever. And I promise you. However long from now, when you decide to retire five years after your last year, when you're sitting somewhere married kids whatever and halloween's around and you see people on facebook posting about halloween haunt you go man i miss those times and you're gonna do what i did and look <laughs> back on those videos and pictures of your first year second year and be like man if i could go back to that i would not have taken one break definitely you know? i would not have taken one water break i would have been out there the entire time mm -hmm. so I hear that's that for lot, anyone man. i hear that a lot i really do mm -hmm. but aaron frame 
For those who've been listening th- this long, thank you for making <laughs> it to this long. I appreciate it. Dude, you're you, a trooper if you've been listening to us this, talk. This, this might be chopped into a two-parter, so just so they don't be like, you really fucking like a four-hour podcast? You're like, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, I'm just, uh, we like talking to Aaron. Aaron likes talking to us. Hey, it's, it's just it's simple as that. It's good quality content. It is. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff. It's going to be I breaking down. I appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, I'll, I'll, 100%. You're welcome back every time. You know you always have it's, that open door. We, I mean, we can keep going, too. Like that's We the, could. We really yeah. could. But I got to be up at 530. I'm pretty sure Aaron's no, got, yeah, I, Aaron's yeah, got no, things no. he's got to do in the morning. <laughs> I know like, Vince's got right. things he can do in the morning. Um, but, I, but genuinely, dude, thank you. Thank you guys for having me on. Uh, yeah. I, I really do. I always am grateful for it. I'm happy, always happy to contribute to any media haunt channel any way I can. You guys are the fans. You're You're what keeps this event going. Everyone, everyone at, that has success at Knotts owes it to you guys as the fans in general. And I I just love the text message. We were recording the podcast last week, and I had texted you during the podcast. Hey, mm-hmm. what does your Thursday look like next week? I want to record, and you're like, for you, I'm open. And boom, yeah. that was just that, dude. And then I told them, guy, I told them on air, and we put it on and it was this week's, this last week's podcast. On air, I told them, I'm like, all right, and be sure you're going to look out for our next guest next week. And they're like, who? What? Guest? I'm like, oh, yeah, I didn't tell you guys. Aaron Frame's going to be on the show next week. And then uh, dude, it's that. Anything for you, man. I'm, I'm happy. Like I said, I'm happy to be a conduit. If you get, you know, for you get views and money and, and notoriety and all the things that you deserve. Uh, Vincent, love talking to you, too. Uh, great yeah, guy. Likewise. Can't, can't say enough about you, man. I love I'm I'm halfway through your podcast with Lucio, by the way. It's a long one. I'm getting through it on my commutes. Lucio um, does do some good long podcasts. I'm still yeah. listening to yours, by the way. I, I love talking to <laughs> I love talking to him too, you know. Uh I love anytime the, I get around huh? I'll just say I love the thumbnail where you guys are smoking cigars. It's like that's yeah, it was in his house. I was yeah. like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> doing this. Uh, yeah, Lu- Lucio and I when we went outside. <laughs> yeah, I saw you mobilized uh, to a place with more uh more airflow. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> But yeah, dude, anytime I come on Talk Haunt, I love doing it. It's a passion of mine. Clearly, I give a fuck about it, and I know you guys too. Oh, yeah. Do too. And uh, yeah, this yeah man, good. thanks for having me on. This was Any, dude, if you ever get those uh, the clowns on, please let me know. I would love to just talk with them. It doesn't oh, yeah. even have to be recorded. I just want to yeah. hear we'll, their uh, stories. We'll set up a day or something. Maybe I can get them if they have some time. Uh, one of them currently is working at Warner Brothers. So uh, I got to look at his oh, schedule. Cool. And then the other one's doing some big stuff in some other theme parks, but uh, hmm. might be wanting to come back pretty soon. So hopefully he does. We'll see. I got to talk hey, to man. him again. But um, I-, I would love to. Yeah, I-, I think you guys would get along great. Um, I- yeah, sounds like it. With all that being said, uh, I want to thank you, Aaron Frame, for your, uh, your time today um, and just talking history of Haunt and our love for Haunt and our opinions of Haunt that we really care about. You can tell that we really care about Haunt in this podcast alone, man. I mean, yeah. if this if fires you, me up. Yeah, it's awesome, man. Uh, Vincent, I, uh, I know why you stayed here because you're like more podcast appearance for me. So oh, there you go. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Now, Vincent's a trooper. Put Vincent... another notch on the tally mark. Yeah, there you go right there. Especially if this is going to be like its own solo one with just me, you, and him. So I'm just saying. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, thank you, AJ. Uh, I know AJ's probably watching the rest of this podcast. Like, you guys went on for that fucking long without me? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sorry, buddy. Uh, we just love talking. But I appreciate you being here for the first half of it. Um, with all that being said, if you guys are new to the channel, subscribe. Follow us on all of our socials. Um, hit us up. Check out our merch if you guys uh, want to rep some Knights of Horror merch. It's pretty pretty dope. Uh, Aaron, it's always a pleasure. The door is always open for you to come back. I got to get one of those shirts you guys have, man. I need to make it into a gym shirt or something. Oh, like the heavy really metal do. one? You like yeah, that, I that need to, yeah, I need to cut it up and make it into a gym shirt. Fucking A. Fucking A. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Got you, brother. Um, with all that being said, I hope you guys have a great uh, night. And like I said, thank you for making it this far. Appreciate you. We love each and every one of you. Stay positive and keep the party going because you know Aaron will be. It's always oh, a party, yeah. dude. Always a party. <laughs> you guys have a great one. Yeah.